law and the governor's March 15th, 2020 order imposing strict limitations on the number of people that may gather in one place. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted at this meeting. Board members will participate in this meeting remotely. As this meeting will be accessible to the public via Zoom online option, information and instructions are available uh, online uh, under the public meeting section of the Bellingham uh, webpage. Moving forward in this meeting, the chair instructs the meeting administrator to deny the right to speak at the meeting until or unless such persons requesting to speak are visible on screen and request such access. Okay. Uh, the Bellingham Conservation Commission will hold a uh, continuation of public hearings uh, in accordance with the uh, Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act General Law Chapter 131 Section 40 and the Bellingham Wetlands Protection Bylaw on the notice of intent for the proposed drainage improvements to the existing interconnection and discharge of the Lakeview Estates and Silver Lake Road drainage systems located within the 100 foot buffer zone at Assessor's Map 68 Lot 10 at the intersection of Candlelight Lane and Silver Lake Road, Bellingham. Robert Poxing, Gary and Helen, Milford Mass has submitted the filing on behalf of the Bellingham Department of Public Works, Blackstone Street, Bellingham, and Salem Traders Way Realty, Quarry Drive, Milford. The continuations will be held uh, online via Zoom on Wednesday, December 9th at 7. Okay. I see Sean is here. Okay. Um, I think what we'll do, uh, for the record, uh, a site inspection was constructed. Was constructed this constructed <laughs> conducted this morning uh, at ten, uh, attended by uh, Mr. Malone, uh, Jim Cuffer, and Frank DePietro, DePietro our peer reviewer. Um, at the meeting, we investigated uh, current conditions and outlined a potential strategy to um, address the concerns of the town moving forward. So, Sean? Uh, yes, thank you. Can, I just want to make sure everybody can hear me. I was having some uh, audio difficulties. Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah. Okay, great. Um, yeah, thank you. As uh, the chair mentioned, we met on site today um, to take a look at the existing conditions. Uh, we talked a little bit about uh, some of the comments that uh, BSC had um, and uh, somewhat strategized on, on how to address those moving forward. I think it was a very productive meeting and certainly appreciate uh, Cliff and Jim and, and Frank uh, attending and, and giving their input. Um, at this point, I think um, we don't really have any more new information for the commission, obviously, but our plan moving forward is to get a response to all the comments uh, received and uh, with some of the things that we talked about today uh, to BSC group, hopefully before uh, the end of this month and then be able to reconvene in January to have a uh, more substantial discussion on uh, what we found in our analysis and, um, and what Frank and BSC thinks about that as well as the commission. Okay, um, just a reminder for, and I know you know this, but I'm reminding all applicants who are responding uh, to peer review comments, um, the proper form is to uh, use the peer review comment letter and then to put in your responses uh, under each item. Uh, that way we can track uh, the success uh, of, uh, of the review and to determine easier if we need additional information. A absolutely. And, and that's the way I prefer to do it uh, as a matter of practice as well. So we're, we're on the same page there. Perfect. I mean, if the okay. commission um, will allow, I'd be happy to send Sean a, a Word version of our uh, peer review letter that we just sent out. Absolutely. I, I'd appreciate that. I'd appreciate yeah. that. Thank you, Frank. Yep, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And, you know, Frank, we may do this, um, we may request the same thing um, when we get to the roadway portion of the Red Mill and further down the line, 
uh, subsequent review on the uh, housing portion of the Red Mill project as well. Okay. 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 All right. So, does anyone have anything else to to add? Was there much water in the base in the basin today? Um, there was always there's always water in the four bay. Um, it looked like the, there was ice in the main basin, but it looked like the water had drained uh, out, but the ice was still self-supporting. Um, we took quick measurements and it looked like we were seven to eight inches uh, of depth below the bottom of the basin. Thank you. So, yeah. you know, I think reading between the lines to answer your question, you know, the, there, there's not two feet of separation in the basin water to groundwater. Okay, any other questions or comments? Okay, um, that being the case, uh, and looking at our preliminary schedule, uh, I would like to continue um, this hearing to the evening of January 27th, 2021, Hopefully it's better than 2020. Hindsight is 2020. Um, at seven. So moved. January 27th. Second. Second. All right. So we have a uh, um, uh, Arianne's in place here. We have a second by, Ari by Arianne. Uh, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, by unanimous vote. <laughs> unanimous vote. Okay. Um, thank you. Thank no, thank you. you. Yeah, we're looking forward to getting this. Um, as are we, as are we. Right. Okay. Um, our next hearings are scheduled for 7.30, but we have a couple of items that we can, uh, we can discuss. Um, we will need to try to make arrangements for signatures uh, as a result of some of the work we're doing here tonight. Um, I'll leave that to the commission to uh, speak with the administrator at the close of the meeting, unless you want to do it now. No, if we have a minute, I don't know. Uh, we're going to have a few things to sign. There'll be a couple of vouchers, maybe a couple of permits. Um, we'll see how the evening goes. Um, and so I didn't know when is is good for everybody. If you want to do uh, like, uh, you know, a morning, um, like we have done in the past at the Muni, Muni Center. Or if you want to meet on Saturday morning, I can accommodate you with that as well. I'm good with, I'm good with the Muni Center. You can, I'll, I'll vouch that I'll be there on time. <laughs> All right. Is anybody else, is, does any other commissioner have the ability to meet um, at the Muni Center for signatures? Or do I you want to do, do it around like noon, like lunchtime. Okay, so Ariane can do it around noon tomorrow. Can it, what, is tomorrow good? Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. would, would, would Monday be too late? Um, well, um, I, I don't put down an issue date until I have enough signatures. So it's just a matter of getting everybody together. Right, I'm, I've, I've got, I, can, I can do it on Monday. Monday, okay. Okay. And Noelle? Monday. On my way to work. Before eight, um, that's early. I could do after five or Saturday. Would Saturday work for you, Neil? Um, not really. Probably not. Okay. okay. Um, all right. All right. Oh, I gotta figure this out. Well, you want to send an email? Yeah. yeah. All right. So what Anna will do is she'll contact you by email and find out if we have sufficient signatures. 
then maybe it won't be necessary in a while, you know, we, okay. because I can sign any time. So uh, once we get once we get the majority, then so, we'll be okay. So we'll play that one by ear. Unless you're out looking at the Northern Lights or something tonight. But. <laughs> Well, I won't be signing it then. <laughs> so, right, so is tomorrow, are we still going to meet tomorrow? Well, if you can make it, I will be very happy to get your signature at Haryan. Um, okay. If it works for you um, tomorrow at noon then? Sure. Okay. And down at my office, can you do that? Yep. Okay. okay. Perfect. Thank you. Great. See you then. All right. Um, yes. Uh, and those aren't working. Um, Oh, I have. What are you looking for? This one. No, those those aren't on here to me. I just have these two. Oh, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. this, is mm -hmm. this is a certificate of compliance for one mm, 114 Brisson Street. Okay. Yeah. So um it's an order from 2016, I think. Um, it's an older one. And it was for a driveway at the end of Brisson Street to access right. to uh, construct a single family home. This is down off of Pulaski Boulevard. Um, a long driveway into a back portion of the property that might have been Ariane's first visit. And it was fairly early on for Sean because I think. If memory serves, we had you, Sean, um, verify the wetland delineation. Mm -hmm. I think so, yeah. <laughs> okay. So, um, Ian and I went down, uh, we checked it out. Um, everything looks good. Sediment erosion control has been removed. Everything's stabilized. Um, you recommend signature on yeah, this? Yeah, yeah. And approval for the signature for the certificate of compliance. Yes. All right. So I'll entertain a motion to sign and issue the certificate of compliance uh, for Brisson Street. So moved. Second. Okay. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. By unanimous vote. <laughs> okay. um, we have another request. Or certificate, and this one is for 455 Hartford Avenue. Okay, 455 Hartford Avenue. This is um, this is the site where the unpermitted cutting was taking place. Uh, in fact, the commission was out recently just to uh, to look at the placement of the uh, the posts with the no disturb zone marking because at some point someone had placed those markers uh, in locations that, as it turns out, were not appropriate. We were uncertain about where they would be. Uh, so while we were there, the applicant uh, and the commission measured off um, where the appropriate locations would be, and we required them to have those locations surveyed. Uh, upon comparison with the original plan uh, in the in the field plan, uh, it appeared that they were substantially the same. So um, we have a request from the applicant to place no ongoing conditions uh, on the certificate of compliance. Now, so that everyone recalls, um, there was unpermitted clearing of 9,835 square feet in the 50 to 100 foot buffer zone. In, in exchange for that, uh, we got mitigation uh, in the area that we reviewed again in the field uh, in the 50 to 100 foot buffer zone at the southeastern portion of the lot. Um, I think the consensus of the commission, and I don't want to put words in, in your mouth, was that um, the reason we the reason we required preservation of that area of 50 to 100 foot was because of the alteration that was unpermitted and that had occurred. 
if we don't put ongoing conditions, um, then, um, then the applicant is free to file a notice of intent and um, possibly utilize that area. So, um, I did. I did send out those ongoing conditions um, to everyone to peruse. I'm so sorry things come in. At, you know, this one wasn't at the last minute, but several things have been coming in at the last minute, and I I apologize. I try to get things out to you as quickly as possible, and sometimes we get inundated with stuff, and and there's not much I can do about it except try to give it to you, um, and hopefully you'll have a chance. Um, we also I also sent out the surveyed uh, location of the no disturb zone post and badges um, as um, the applicant agreed to do. So they, they did that survey of those locations and um, that was sent out. So what is our pleasure? Um, keep the ongoing conditions. <laughs> Do we have a consensus there? Second. We put them in place for a reason. Okay, so. Neil, would you put that in the form of a motion? I move that we sign, we issue and sign the order with the previously stated conditions. Ongoing conditions. Um, previously stated ongoing motion. conditions. Uh, Arian, was that a second? Yeah. Okay. Any further discussion? All in favor? Uh, Aye. 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 Okay. By unanimous vote. Wow, Sean, you're looking like your emo phase is back. <laughs> I saw Don Martino on the screen, and I'm wondering, um, Don, do you know we already continued that hearing? Oh, For um, candlelight. Don, oh, are, you, are you available? Yeah, you don't need me? <laughs> <laughs> well, we didn't say that. No, 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 no. But we do have a question. Um, I don't need to be needed either. We, we always need you, Don. We always need you. A question came up during our... I will uh, feel hurt. <laughs> we're only going to hold you for a minute. A question came up. Um, when we were doing our inspection, um, we wondered if the proprietary stormwater management system on Silver Lake Road uh, has been maintained. Has that been cleaned and checked? No, we, well, we wouldn't do it now but it hasn't having it just gone in yeah it's in it's in our rotation we got like a the inline bmps we call them we probably got a little less than a dozen but we do them they're on our list so we, we check them check them twice a year usually only end up cleaning them about every three or four years it takes a long time to get enough sediment in there to well, the applicants the engineer requested the information and i said i didn't think that they had been maintained yet as they were so new yep but exactly that's exactly that we right. would ask that's exactly right okay oh, thanks man. um so i think um so what's the continuation date okay so it'll be uh wednesday um january 27th 2021 at seven o'clock Okay, thank you very much. Thank Our you. pleasure. Great, thanks. Thanks, Don. Anything else? Do you want to take a vote on vouchers to sign? Okay. Well, oh, that's, that'll sign just be signing okay. things, so that'll go with that. So there's nothing else that we can talk about, I don't think. Okay. Unless somebody else has. Well, John is here. <clears throat> John. John. Frederico. Yeah. Yep. So what we may be able to do, um, we have we have the flexibility to to adapt on the fly. It's very <laughs> unusual that we we manage to come out ahead of schedule, but right now we are a couple of minutes ahead of schedule. So um, if John has no. Um, Objection. Um, then what I'm going to do is I will open up the block of hearings for a lot 75A, 74A, 73A, 72A, mm -hmm. and I'm going to preface preface it with um, 
Well, John's online. Is there anyone else from um, your company that's going to be present tonight? Um, I don't believe so. I believe it will just be myself tonight. Okay. Well, then I'll dispense with the reading of my. Hi. Hi, Coach. Uh, sorry to interrupt. Uh, this is Muhammad Bashir, uh, who is the purchaser of Lot 74. I just joined to know about the status. He's just here. Oh, okay. He's just here to understand what's going on with the farm. Okay. Not a problem. So, thank you for identifying yourself. <clears throat> the Bellingham Conservation Commission will hold public hearings in accordance with the Mass Wetlands Protection Act, General Law Chapter 131, Section 40, and the Bellingham Wetlands Protection Bylaw on the notice of intent for the proposed site work within the 100 foot buffer zone to boarding vegetator wetlands associated with the construction of single family dwellings. Uh, four lots, 75A, 18 celestial circle, 74A, 20 celestial circle, lot 73A, 22 celestial circle, and lot 72A, 24 celestial circle. John Federico, Gary and Helen, Milford Mass has submitted the filing on behalf of South Center Realty, Quarry Drive, Milford. The continuations will be held online via Zoom on Wednesday, December 9th at 7.30. Okay. So, um, John, unfortunately, um, we got revised plans um, yesterday, and we have had no opportunity to, to look at them. Um, but I'd like to just recap uh, our site walk for the record. Sure. Um, uh, Two Saturdays ago, the commission was out in the field. Um, we did a site inspection. Uh, we found that the Senate erosion controls were in proper locations. Um, we, we looked at the staked out corners of the house and the commission had some concerns uh, relative to the grading from the back of the house to the rain gardens. And um, we determined that even though the, the grade was, was at or near a three to one slope, which is standard engineering practice. Uh, we requested John to see if he would be able to lower the elevation of the foundation at all in order to gentle that slope a little further uh, based on the applicant's uh, track record of having difficulty stabilizing sites with similar s slopes in um, phase one. So how did you make out with that? Uh, so with regards to that, um, unfortunately, we weren't able to really um, do too much to lower the slopes out there. Um, but as a part of the commission's request, uh, we did go in and add in a construction methodology portion to our notes section. And that's really the only significant change that's occurred on those plans. Um, and that would essentially be uh, describing uh, what would be done in order to help um, stabilize that slope that is being proposed on the backside. Um, and then also too, in addition to um, that construction methodology portion, I know um, Elizabeth uh, Manini uh, had provided in the email a, a little bit of a description on her end of uh, where her thoughts are on the slope. Um, I do have a copy of that email um, that I could uh, read off to the commission or if you don't mind a, sh a screen share, I could uh, have that up on the screen for everybody. Um, and uh, as of right now, um, we believe firmly that we're not going to have any sort of erosion issues with that three to one slope. Um, and we did also, uh, like I mentioned, include that construction methodology to help confirm that that would be something that um, would be done properly out in the field or sorry, constructed properly out in the field. I, I, I can appreciate the fact that you feel very strongly that there's going to be no danger for erosion. But again, based on the track record uh, and, and some of the instances we've seen, I don't share that opinion. However, um, you should look at the trees. Maybe we can... Well, we just got oh, them today. Okay. Um, uh, one of the things that concerned me, I did see a copy of her email. One of the things that concerned me uh, and and I'm paraphrasing here, but essentially, oh, I Ian just gave it to me. Um, uh, it says, uh, while it seems unlikely Fafford will be getting building permits until 2021, 
earthwork for preparing the lots can proceed prior to issuance of a building permit. Uh, getting this work done completely as timely as possible will put them in a position to construct the homes as soon as the building permits uh, are issued. Uh, I don't know about the rest of the commission. I I've got some concerns about doing site work this time of year and then being able to stabilize the slopes even at three to one. Um, I think, how are you gonna keep it from washing down and potentially overtopping the sediment erosion control if it's not properly stabilized? And again, I'm just pointing to uh, multiple examples of exactly this kind of failure. And we're not shooting the messenger, John, but we're uh, understandable for that. Um, I think uh, when Liz is referring to any sort of um, like earthwork that would be done there, uh, that would be more or less to uh, help fill in uh, that uh, temporary uh, ditch that we have on, on the middle of those lots right now, um, help bring down some of those grades a little bit, um, a little bit closer to road grade. Um, and then that, from my understanding, um, should really be all that's occurring there. I, I do not believe that they will be going fully through and constructing uh, the full slope that's out there. Uh, but that is something that um, they would be hydro seeding um, once anything is done out there. Um, and then I know in our construction methodology, we also did include, um, if I recall correctly, um, a mulch that would be put on top of it um, to help prevent any sort of erosion until that hydro seed is taking place. John, it's December. The likelihood of hydro seed uh, taking is uh, fairly remote, I would think. Um, on the other hand, green ice will look pretty on the back slope, won't it, for a while? <laughs> Seasonal? Because <laughs> that's all it's going to be is green ice. I mean, come on. Hydro seed? Um, I don't know that I would be willing to go that far. Uh, I might be willing to consider it if if we had the ability to use erosion control blankets as a temporary stabilization measure. Um, but, in, and Elizabeth also made the point that um, she said there's very little impact to the buffer zone and we're trying to keep it that way. You know, erosion, erosion coming down that hill, water coming down that hill could easily um, get there. Um, what is the commission's thought on that? I mean, you, you folks were out there and saw it. Mr. Chair, if, if the applicant's uh, letter indicates time is of the essence and they're getting this to us the day before the hearing, they know better than that. I'm for putting any discussion in this future discussion off till another meeting and they can just wait. If this was that important, they could have gotten the information to us in a more timely manner. And I'm not in a rush to approve any earthwork this time of the year without a really serious plan in place, like you said, blankets or something like that to guarantee it. I don't feel that the time is of the essence. Pre preserving the property is of the essence. And once the erosion happens, it's pretty much too late at that point. My opinion. All right. Hey, the, uh, the three to one slopes we're looking at now where the construction is happening. I mean, we're already seeing evidence of erosion and I think more earthwork is going to be um, unhelpful. So, um, yeah. Chairman, I, I, I just want to concur that, that I, I don't feel that the, the applicant um, has shown the ability to prevent any erosion from occurring on a regular, on a, on a, on a consistent basis. So, so I, I don't, I don't, I don't see them I don't see that that's possible, especially this time of year. Okay. <clears throat> so let me ask a question. Um, we, are, we have a special meeting scheduled for the 16th. The reason we had that meeting because the overflow from this meeting was so great. Um, you know, once it gets past 11 o'clock, I think our level of productivity uh, diminishes somewhat. So we have a special meeting would the commission be amenable um, to reconsidering this on the 16th if by the end of the week we could get some sort of uh, erosion control stabilization protocol um, to review before the 16th and we could continue these as a block again um, 
because again, you know, we're up, you know, we're carrying 20 to 24 applications right now. Uh, and I'm not, I'm just saying, would you be amenable to that? And then we could direct John to a stop, a come up and develop a you know, comprehensive protocol to assure that we wouldn't have erosion if they insist on doing that kind of work this time of year. And John, that's standard, that's standard construction practices. I mean, that's not unusual. Uh, understood for your concerns there. And um, I can definitely speak to uh, both the client and Elizabeth on um, any sort of use of uh, these erosion control blankets that you have mentioned um, or any other suggestions you might have um, to see if um, the, the applicant would be amenable to um, using anything like that. Um, and then if not, if we uh, can come up with some sort of erosion control uh, plan of action uh, to present back to you during that meeting. I, I, I'm, I th don't misunderstand. I, I think this is a directive. It's not, it's not a request. You know, if you guys are going to do uh, winter grading, it's got to be stabilized and it has to be an aggressive stabilization. Again, based on the track record of this developer and um, the lack of success for very similar areas. Um, it, but I'm, I'm speaking as the chairman. I don't know if other members would consider even granting you that uh, consideration. Understood. So, sure. I got a question. Um, this assumes if we go ahead and let this suggestion of going to the 16th with them coming back with some protocols to do earthwork, that we approve of the idea of them doing in those particular lots that we did survey some of us that were on site there. No, re no attempt to do anything to make the slope a lesser height. I mean, that's a, that's a big drop to come down with that three run slope. Standing there looking at it, it looks daunting to say the least. The suggestion was made, not the suggestion, an observation was made during the sidewalk, I know, by some commission members to the applicant's rep that perhaps something could be done to move the house basically and create it's something, do something closer to the road, giving us more space in the back to do more gentling and grading and so forth to keep it from being a cliff basically dropping off behind the property. Doesn't seem like the applicant wants to do that or is going to be able to do that or is willing to do that at this point in time. But if we give the go ahead to go to the 16th and come up, let them come up with a plan to do earthwork, we are basically, correct me if I'm wrong, signing off on the fact that we approve of the fact that they're going to do the three to one slope in the back there and not try to get them to more aggressively really do something to change the design of some of the lots. I mean, I don't think these lots are well designed from an environmental point of view. I'm not saying anything about the house. They might be the best house in the world, but I already got one. So I'm not looking for a house. Other comments? Now, John, you want to explain to us exactly um, what Fafford's thought processes here are? I mean, you said you were very adamant that nothing was going to happen. Is that because um, you, as an engineering group, are satisfied that the three to one slopes are sufficient? Or is it because um, the engineering doesn't work for some reason. That's important for us to know. No, no, no. Uh, as far as anything engineering related goes, um, in terms of uh, lowering the houses, um, we can potentially run into some issues uh, working with slopes uh, for the actual uh, sewer itself, uh, not necessarily as much um, anything on the, on the slope side of the actual earthwork that's out there. Um, in terms of anything for the three to one slope itself though, uh, that is something that we do uh, feel that a solid engineering practice um, would prevent any sort of major erosion out there, if any at all. Um, it would be something that uh, we would have as proposed in our construction methodology uh, to make sure that uh, once the slope is uh, built up, that tracking would be done perpendicular to the contours out there. Um, to create little uh, rivets in order for any sort of hydro seeding or, or plantings to catch into should there be any sort of uh, minor erosion of any top materials there. Um, that will also kind of help uh, compact everything uh, better into that slope and hillside um, as well as ensure uh, through what is standard practice again uh, on that uh, that we're not going to have any sort of uh, erosion that would fall into where either the rain gardens will be proposed or further into where the 
open space area is. Um, as Liz did note in uh, the email, um, we do have some separation and that rain garden area would be flattened out a little bit. So um, anything, if, if there was something coming down directly from where the three to one slope is, it would uh, disperse and not cause any sort of uh, deep rutting or anything that would undermine or uh, be adversely uh, affecting to the existing erosion control uh, barrier that is out there right now. <laughs> Excuse me. So uh, looking again at uh, the letter from Elizabeth Manny, um, she says uh, post-construction erosion on a three to one slope is not considered likely in typical engineering design. And then she goes on to say, if there was erosion of the slope, it would discharge to the rain garden, not the open space, wetland, or no disturbed zone uh, buffer. Um, so, so she's admitting to the possibility of, of erosion. Um, I mean, there's always going to be any sort of possibility, even if something is, you know, existing for 10, 20 years. Um, you know, we, we can't always say 100% that that is not the case. Um, but as she did note, it is very highly unlikely that something like that uh, could occur once any sort of uh, stabilization has taken place out there. And it's, it's during construction, I think, that, that we're worried about, or even before the house is constructed, the grading. Uh, I know I know Frank is here for another hearing, and I'm wondering if I could oppose upon his goodwill to maybe comment on uh, on this. Um, so I'll preface this by not knowing the exact site, not seeing uh, what's, what's there. Um, for again, I would agree with John if constructed appropriately, if. Um, measures were taken to avoid water coming down from somewhere else and flowing over a three to one slope, it could be stable. Um, I will also note that um, it being winter, ground potential being frozen, um, I'm not sure how much grading is going to be done, but once the ground starts freezing up, you're not going to get a really good stable three to one slope. You need to do something on there. You need more like the erosion blankets, um, I've seen a kind of a hydro seed that has no seed. It's a tactifier coat. So it's sort of like a big glue across a, a surface that holds in place. Um, but if it starts getting ripped up from some reason, it, it can erode out. But I've, I've seen that on flatter, not three to one, but flatter things that instead of hydro seed, you basically glue the, the soil in place over the winter. Um, I think a detailed plan would have to be um, put in place. I did walk the site. There were a number of three to one slopes that I saw this morning when we did our walk that had eroded. Um, and again, a lot of that ties to where the water is coming down before it gets to three to one slope. If you've got a lot of water coming down, if it's channelized in any manner, you get those three to one slopes. And even a um, sedimentation erosion control, hydro can get eroded out and something like that. So they need to be, in my mind, a lot of prep and I'm not, again, I know these are relatively small, they're not acre lots, they're smaller lots. But again, I think you'd wanna be very careful on how you prepare the site to prevent or minimize any chance of erosion. And even then there's no guarantee if you get a heavy storm or something like that. Mm. How's that for shooting from the dock? That's <laughs> fine, we appreciate, we appreciate the insight. Um, so I guess this gets back to my original question. Um, if we were to get a more substantial uh, protocol to protect the slopes, um, would the commission be willing to continue this and consider it at that special meeting of the 16th? Yes. Yes, if they show us. I don't need a vote, I just kind of need a consensus. Yeah. I was, I was consensusing. Uh, okay. <laughs> I don't, I think we should put them, I don't want to make more work for the commissioner and his uh, assistant there. I mean, the administrative assistant, but um, I don't feel any need to facilitate their timing when they had the 
in consideration, uh, lack of consideration to give us this information the day before the hearing when we've dealt with them for years and they know better. I mean, that puts the burden back on the two of you unfairly, I think. And I don't think we should facilitate their efforts to do the project beyond going to the next scheduled hearing when there's an available slot to consider whatever plan they come up with. That's my opinion, but I'll go with the majority of the commission. Well, we have a couple of members who, who think that it would be appropriate. In terms of our efforts, um, our efforts are multi-pronged here. Uh, in addition to trying to make sure everything gets done properly, we're also trying to make sure that we don't have such a backlog of projects that um, we end up needing to meet on a weekly basis. I'm sure Jim would not be happy about that. <laughs> Thank um, you for your sentiment, though, Mike. <laughs> yes. Um, any other comments? Uh, you know, John, how confident are you that you could get us something uh, forthwith? Um, I can uh, reach out to the team tomorrow morning. Um, unfortunately, I'm working from home, um, so I'm a little bit limited right now. Uh, but I, I will try to do my best to, to get some answers um, tomorrow and then something sent back over to the commission um, either tomorrow or on Friday. Um, as timely as possible for everyone. Yeah, we don't want to be in the same situation that we were today when we, we get revised plans. We received so much information the early part of this week with so many hearings open, it's, it's, it's impossible to consider everything. So, and, you know, we have uh, our bylaw says 10 days. Now, we usually, we usually flexible on that, but it's, it's so busy. Um, Maybe one, one suggestion, um, and I'll just throw this out. Could there be contingencies thrown into some kind of um, this erosion control, a uh, stockpile of hay bales or sedimentation fabric or whatever else, or um, a notification that, um, I wouldn't say daily, but more than the weekly re reports or after immediately after a storm that someone goes out there and checks on it? Um, I'm just trying to think of things that yeah, you could yeah. think of ahead of the time that might help alleviate any issues from getting worse. Well, part of the problem we're having, Frank, is that, you know, um, the SWEP reports are, are distributed and um, the people responsible for construction aren't responsible. You know, they, they do not act on the recommendations in the report. And so a minor problem becomes a major problem. Uh, I, I would like to see, you know, something along the line of my original suggestion, which is, you know, beefy uh, sediment erosion control blankets or something that will that we know will stabilize the site. Um, your comment about you know ice. I mean, obviously, <laughs> hydro seed's not going to take. Uh, the water is going to run down the hill, uh, and if it cuts through the ice, then we're going to have transportation of silt down the hill. I mean, we we all know these things. Um, but I'm thinking that in, in, the, in the instance of trying to um, process some of these, um, these permits, I'm, I think I'm willing to, uh, to grant them this, this chance. No, what do you? What's... I, I totally agree. I think if, if John can come up with something, um, and and I think maybe even incorporating some of Frank's ideas with having some on-site storage of uh, erosion blankets and so forth, I think that's really important because um, because of our past experience up there. I mean, we've all seen it. We all know what it is, and we're trying to avoid this from happening again. So, if this is not done in a timely fashion, or if it is not acceptable, then, you know, the applicant runs the risk of this going well into January. So I think, it, I think it's going to be, um, the impetus will be there to get this done. In terms of the lots as of right now, because I, I know this is open for 72 through 75, um, from my notes and my recollection during our site visit, I know um, generally the, the commission members did not seem to have any sort of major issues with lot 72. 
Um, that one there had just some minor grading that was occurring within that 100 foot buffer. Uh, is that something that um, uh, we would be able to get any sort of sign off uh, tonight? Or is that something that's still being uh, continued with the remainder of these lots that are ex experiencing that steeper slope area? Okay, I think what we'll do there is, you know, we, we just got these in. We haven't had an opportunity. We, they were all revised. We did not expect to get a revised plan for um, uh, lot 72. 72, it was just the inclusion of the uh, same construction methodology for that slope that was there. Uh, there was nothing that changed in terms of any sort of grading, uh, footprint moving, or anything like that that occurred for yeah, that so particular lot. I think, John, uh, the, the note on the plan says something about um, updating the title, possibly uh, lot lines, and it also to refer to grading. I didn't see where there was any grading change, but that was on the note. So we would definitely want to be using that revised plan. We want, it, as long as it's, uh, it's existing, that's the one we want to use. Um, but we don't have paper versions of those plans either. Okay, um, I'll definitely make sure I, I coordinate with my admins tomorrow on um, the status of those uh, paper plans for you guys. Um, and then I can make sure that is it two copies typical that you would need um, or would you need more in that case? Three would be fine. Should Three, we? okay. Um, I will definitely make sure that we do have those out to you guys ASAP for those. Um, and then um, I can double check into it. I, I know for a couple of the plan titles, uh, they were originally titled as resource area plans. Um, we just flipped the name back to building permit plot plans in that case. Um, so uh, again, in terms of at least lot 72, nothing significant on that one had occurred um, compared to the most recent one that was uh, viewed by the commission at the site walk. All right, so here's what I'm gonna suggest. Again, you are correct, we did look at that lot um, I don't think anybody on the commission had uh, problems with it. It was the grading uh, it, and the layout were, were relatively benign. Um, the impact of the buffer zone was even more minor than the other lots. Um, what I'm going to suggest that is we continue the four as a, a block and that we prepare the order for 72. Thank you. And then that way, um, it, you know, because Ian and I will review that when we have a little more, a, a little opportunity to take a peek at it and develop the order. Um, does the commission, is the commission okay with that? because we are continuing to uh, next week anyway. Right. Uh, this one, and if you have any questions, we can look at the plan again. Okay. Good. Okay, in that case, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, accept the motion to continue uh, these lots, uh, 75, 74, 73, 72A. Um, to the evening of September 16th uh, at 8.20. So moved. Mr. Chairman, I, I think you said September. Um, I did say September. I'm I mean, so I'm sorry. fine with that. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know. I want. I want this all behind us. I'll, I'll put it off till September. I don't think John. I don't think John or his uh, his John folks would be very yeah. happy. I did say September. Uh, I I mean. I mean December. December, December 16th at 8:20. So it's moved. been a long year for everybody. So uh, no, no worries or anything on on my end for that one. So have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Opposed? Aye. Right, that's a unanimous vote. Okay. So, uh, John, uh, uh, Mike, did you vote no? I voted no. Um, my mistake. Sorry. You gotta, you gotta push that no out there. You really, you gotta sell it. <laughs> okay. Sell the no. Thank you. Only because they were put all together, you understand. I have the issue with the one lot. So that's a vote of six yay and one opposed. All right.
Okay. So, uh, we're maintaining our, uh, our pace. So we are still a few minutes ahead of schedule. Um, what I'm going to do here is uh, proceed with the next hearing, even though it's a little early. Is Sean on? Sean, uh, I saw him here a moment ago. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there he is. Okay. okay. Bellamy Conservation Commission will hold public hearings in accordance with the Mass Wetlands Protection Act, General Law, Chapter 131, Section 40, the Bellamy and Wetlands Protection Bylaw, and the notice of intent for the proposed grading, site work, and stormwater management system associated with a 103 lot residential subdivision entitled Bellamy Shores, including the construction of the subdivision roadway located within the buffer zone to border vegetated wetlands with proposed filling of 1,757 square feet of isolated vegetated wetlands. The property is located at Sessor's Map 72, lots 13, 1, 13, 2, 14 through 14, 7, and 14, 16 uh, at South Main Street and Cross Street, Bellingham. Scott Goddard, Goddard Consulting, North Pearl Mass, has submitted a filing on behalf of Rick Terrell, Bellingham Residential Realty, Cordyard Milford. The hearings will um, be held via Zoom and are continued to the evening of. Wednesday, December 9th at eight o'clock. Okay. There's Sean. Oh, I'm here. <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> when we were in the field, um, I gave Mr. Malone a, a, an update about the status uh, of the order of conditions. Um, at our last hearing, we promised that we would uh, work diligently to develop the order of conditions. We've put quite a few hours into this, and there were a couple of pieces of information that we still needed. Um, we needed the we needed a, a complete set of revised plans to make sure that we're referencing the current plans of record, and that, that the same plans uh, that are being held by the planning board, uh, they were delivered. Um, they were delivered. So we have that information to work with. Um, we talked about a dollar amount um, and, and we touched base in the field relative to um, the, the town's establishment of a stormwater management account. And I think that I'll defer to uh, our administrator, she and Jim have come up with a number um, in I think you guys came up with a number. Well, what we did is uh, Jim and I talked about it today. We referred back to the bylaw, and I don't have the exact number of the bylaw, uh, but it did refer to um, the applicant um, donating a sum of money um, to cover the cost of maintenance for 10 years. I think that's what it said, Jim. Is that correct? Yeah. Um, so, um, I, I believe uh, Sean Den um, Don DiMartino had suggested an amount of $1,900 uh, for maintenance. Um, so, um, for 10 years, that's coming to $19,000. Okay, uh, that, that sounds reasonable. And and uh, if I may, uh, that section is 245-13DH. Uh, that's the 10-year stipulation for maintenance. 245. DH, yeah. I gave it to him today, and I forgot to write it down. Oh. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so that's the credit for her work. <laughs> <laughs> it's a team effort. Yes. I thought it was 245G. <laughs> <laughs> so we will um, incorporate that figure into our permit. Mm -hmm. Was there any other thing that we needed? I don't know. No. Offhand, I don't think, 
I think one of the, the last item, there were just, a, there was some language that we needed to coordinate with uh, the planning board to make sure that we weren't going to be more restrictive than they were, or they were going to be more restrictive than we were. But I think that um, the administrator and the town planner are working those details out now. Um, so, uh, Jim, you're meeting with the planning board on this tomorrow? Correct, yes. And you're looking to wrap this up, your first meeting in January, is that? Um, you know, I, I can't speak for the board right now. They're going to be looking at the conditions tomorrow night. So, yeah, I think the intention is to close it as soon as we can, as soon as we can get every all the last uh, details uh, ironed out here. Okay, so, um, Sean, I believe we have everything that we need to complete the permit. Like I said, uh, most of the heavy lifting has been, has been done. <clears throat> so... What I would like to do, I would like to suggest to the commission, we continue this the evening of January 13th, at which time we have the order prepared for signature. Does that sound reasonable to everyone? Okay. In that case. Yeah, I, and, 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 and Cliff, um, the only, and I would like to just say, I, I appreciate the efforts that uh, you and Ann and the commission have put in to, to, to pull this order together. I know it's not an easy task. Um, the only thing I would request um, is that this be conveyed to the planning board in advance of our meeting tomorrow to let them know that you are bringing this to a close and, and you don't have any more issues. and you're going to be ready to vote uh, on that date. Um, actually, I, yeah, we're that. That's correct. Now, um, Jim is here. He's present, uh, so he's a witness to this, and he can certainly mm -hmm. uh, bring this information uh, to the planning board and tell them um, that this is our course of action. The document will be prepared for signature on the thirteenth. Appreciate that. Thank you. And I would like to say um, to you, Mr. Malone, that um, substantial improvements have been made to this, uh, to this project um, and your cooperation has been most appreciated. I appreciate that as well. It's been a good team effort, I think, between us and the town, I agree. Okay, I'll let you turn a motion at this time uh, to continue the hearing uh, to the evening of January 13th at seven o'clock. So moved. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Okay. I had some. Jim, what's your witness fee? <laughs> Was that an opposed? No, I'm saying, I'm asking Jim what his witness fee is for witnessing this on behalf of the Oh, jeez. Okay. Good. <laughs> Box of cookies or something? Come on, it's Christmas time, Jim. Push it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I would just like to say thank you all, and uh, I hope you all have a, a happy holiday and uh, reconvene after the new year. Well, thanks. Thank you, you very too. much. <laughs> Appreciate that. Take care. Yep. Okay. <clears throat> Going? I guess so. Why not? Oh, my mom's. Okay. In light of the fact that we're making substantial progress, um, I'm going to uh, continue with the agenda. Bellingham Conservation Commission will hold public is uh, before I do. Uh, is John still here? Yeah, John. Yeah, oh, yeah, yep. There he is. Okay. <laughs> Bellingham Conservation Commission will hold continuations of public hearings in accordance with the Mass Wildlife Protection Act, General Law, Chapter 131, Section 40, and the Bellingham Wildlife Protection Bylaw on the notice of intent for the proposed construction of a single family dwelling with grading, utilities, and landscaping located within a 100-foot buffer zone to boarding vegetative wetlands 
at Assessor's Map 64, Block 212, Lot 81, 9 Lovers Lane, Bellingham. John Frederico, Darren Howland, Milford Mass has submitted the filing on behalf of South Center Realty, uh, Corey Drive, Milford. The continuations will be held via Zoom on the evening of December 9th uh, at 8.15. So we are a little ahead of schedule. Um, if anyone uh, shows up and wants to know um, what the status of this hearing is, we'll give them, a, we'll give them an update. So this is lot 81. Yes, um, if uh, I could request to do a screen share, I do have an updated plan. Um, it is not stamped just yet, uh, but it is something that um, if there is no issues um, with the proposed design, we can uh, definitely have that stamped and then sent over to the commission. Um, I also do have some updates. There were a series of questions that were asked during the last meeting. Um, we did have a conference call uh, between the applicant, and myself, and Versalock on some of those questions and am able to provide an update on that tonight as well. Okay. <clears throat> oh, yes, Jim, would you allow that? Thank you. You should be ready to roll. Okay, is um, everybody able to see my screen clearly? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Um, so um, with regards to this plan in particular, um, there was uh, a point that was brought up uh, regarding the extent of the VersaLock wall. Um, that has now been corrected. Uh, we do have the VersaLock wall. Uh, sorry about that. Let's see here. Um, Unfortunately, it looks like my highlighter is not working this time, um, but if you can see where my cursor is right here, um, I did have that VersaLock wall get extended further down um, to where the 286 contour is. It will then be able to transition into the proposed boulder wall that we have uh, had, and then that will continue at uh, no height greater than four feet uh, down through lot 80. Um, in addition to that, uh, right in this corner here, there were some concerns with it being so close to the 25 foot no disturb buffer. Um, I did also pull that back and have checked with um, various design plans uh, that VersaLock has. Um, those 45 degree angles is something that is able to be achieved. Um, those were the only updates that occurred at this moment in time for the plan in particular. Um, is there anything or would the commission like me to zoom in onto this at all just to get a clearer look for uh, those two changes? No, I, I, I think what happened was the, um, the area where the boulder wall intercepted with the VersaLock wall, uh, that was uh, an error in the drawing. Yes, and that is something that did get corrected, as mentioned. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm still a little bit concerned. No, I'm a lot concerned about the proximity of that foundation. Um, yes, and I, I do have updates on that per um, the conference call that we had with VersaLock. Um, give me one moment here, Dust, to uh, pull up those notes here. Uh, Cliff, while they're doing it, I have a quick question about the two points that were raised. One was, I think Neil was the one who asked, how are they going to make the boulder wall mesh, merge, whatever you want to use, with a VersaLock wall? What's the, how do you make boulders fit up against a, a man-made smooth structure? And the second question I had was, John mentioned that he's pulled back from the 25 foot. How far back did you pull? Were you able to pull it? Um, it was a, a few feet that I pulled there. Um, I is approximately, I would say, uh, four to five feet, but I can get you an exact dimension on that. Um, what was it before? Uh, we did have it within about a foot or so of where that buffer was. So um, we did try to, to pull it back a little bit. Um, I just did not want to jeopardize um, anything in that corner in terms of any sort of space to turn, um, just for any sort of maintenance purposes um, with lawn care and then also the close proximity to that deck. 
And then the question about how do you make the stone wall over by the 286, which I think is now where the Versa lock is going to end. Yes, that is correct. How does, how does that merge into a, or meld itself uh, into a stone wall? Yes, um, so with regards to that, um, in terms of the boulder wall or the Versa lock walls, either one of those, um, the uh, material that is there is able to be cut um, to create a smooth edge to work with. Um, but VersaLock has had some experience doing some of these uh, type of uh, situations before. Um, what they are proposed to do in that case would be to uh, have the VersaLock wall constructed completely independently, um, as noted in number two on my screen here, uh, from the boulder wall. They would then have that turn at a 90 degree angle towards the house so that um, any sort of tiebacks or anything would be located away from where the boulder wall is. Then at that point, um, that would give a smooth edge to have a butting up against the wall with no sort of structural integrity that would occur uh, between where the boulder wall faces and the face of the Versalock wall. Um, John, I'm not seeing what you said was a number two. I'm not sure, are you move your mouse on it maybe or something? Uh, yes, uh, are you able to see um, where my cursor is currently. I'm giving a cursory look and I see nothing. Okay, I'm sorry about that. I might have to uh, try this again here. Um, my apologies there. Don't worry, we won't cursor you out. Um, are, are you able to see um, uh, some text on the yes. screen currently? Okay, great. Um, and then uh, number two up up here uh, was where VersaLock had provided that uh, justification for it. Okay, so the VersaLock is at a ninety degree, so it turns into the into the slope with the ninety degree turn. My question still is: they're saying they're going to cut the boulders with a smooth surface and then just push them up against it, glue them. How do you make a rock stick to a piece of concrete? In terms of any sort of uh, gluing them together, um, I don't believe that would be the case there. It would just be a saw cut and then um, the, the weight of the, the boulders itself would help keep it in place, as well as any sort of compaction that's done to hold those in place. So the end of the Versalock wall essentially is going to be freestanding. I mean, the boulder wall will be there, but there'll be no structural tie-in. It's just going to be freestanding. Yes, the and they, they will be blended together, um, or there would be the option to allow them to overlap in that case. Um, essentially, the, the very front boulder would almost be like a facade uh, as it blends in at that point. Um, again, in terms of the boulders, they, they would be larger boulders. It's not like we're proposing anything you know, on the small side. So uh, weight itself uh, should be able to hold that in place, um, as well as any sort of compaction of material on top and around it. So just, John, just <laughs> forgive the <laughs> lack of understanding on this, but so you've got a irregularly shaped approximately what diameter? You say larger boulder, that's too general. I have no idea what that means. Three foot in diameter approximately or a foot and a half in diameter compared to a foot. What uh, it would be larger than um, a, a foot and a half in diameter. I'm not sure the exact specs for it. Uh, Less than four feet? I don't know. I mean, just give me a range if you could. Um, I would say anywhere between three feet and greater at, at that point. Okay, so you cut one side, but you stick, push it up against the, the, the concrete burst lock wall. I understand that. How are you getting the boulders to sit tightly enough together to prevent I mean, you're not going to saw cut all the way around the boulder, then you've turned it into basically a big stone block. Um, how are you making that first connection point where after that it's just stone against stone with stuff behind it, I assume the fabric? They're going to prevent movement. Yeah. In terms of that, it would be the, the other boulders around it that would be holding it in place as well as any sort of compaction of the, the soil that's around it. This is only one layer thick of boulders, correct? You're not putting like two or three layers with one layer up on top of that and so forth, like a pyramid effect. Um, in terms of that, um, I can only default to uh, what our typical detail would show. Um, and in that case there, it, sorry, bear with me one second here. Um, it, it is shown as one larger boulder and then there might be some smaller ones wedged in between to hold it. And behind it, there is something to keep the soil from washing through? Because uh, Yes, we, we do have a, a geofabric that would be proposed behind that um, that would allow for um, some water to go through. It's not completely impervious, 
um, but it would prevent a lot of the soil or anything from uh, blowing through any of the cracks that are there. A lot of the soil from blowing through any of the cracks. But sorry, I, I don't mean a lot, but but preventing it from the, having the soil to blow through. Do we have, Frank, if I could ask a question, John. Um, at the interface uh, where the Versalock wall turns 90 degrees into the site, uh, and then you've got the stone piled up, um, how would you address the interface between the fabric behind the stone wall and the Versalock? And, and sort of where I'm going is, it would seem you'd want to put the fabric up against the 90 degree portion of the stone wall, turn it the 90 degrees to go behind the stone. So now you've got a fabric that sort of wraps around the corner and prevents, my concern would be right at the interface if that uh, fabric is not turned around or whatever, material could go, could wash out between the verse lock wall and the interface with the stone wall. Like you need to think about how that's gonna be prevented. Mm -hmm. Okay, and that, that is something that I, I can follow back up with VersaLock on if they have anything specific there, um, or if there is any sort of ability to possibly mount um, that uh, barrier to the face of the wall to help prevent that from anything to, to sneak in between the, the crack where that blending surface would be occurring. And again, I think you'd want to take it far enough back so soil couldn't go around it. Uh, understood that, for that. And I don't know how you do that, but... Do we have any other walls, Cliff or, or John, um, on this site that have been built similarly with stone, that height approximately the same size as boulders has been proposed or anything, that have been there on site for more than a day or two or a week or month or whatever? Something's been there for a year or two? I know we do have an armored slope along uh, the uh, lots um, in the 90s range, um, uh, and then I believe that that goes down to lot 100 or so. I'm, armored um, slope isn't quite what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a wall, specifically a retaining wall, all boulders of the similar design to what's being proposed. Do we have anything else on site that's been built? Um, uh, on this portion of the site, um, there is none that I can recall off the top of my head. Um, I would have to look into phase one a little bit more closely to see if there is anything there. Because I just don't have a lot of, underst not, not understanding. Uh, I have a lack of confidence in the methodology. I'm not an engineer, but I just would love to have seen one in place for a little while. I don't know if the other board members feel about that, to, that we could go to and say, yeah, they did it right, and this is doing a good job, and it's holding in a similar area, but similar situation. We, we know that this is a very, very difficult lot, and I think we all share your concern, Mike, that, you know, a mistake here um, <clears throat> in a short period of time could ruin somebody's life. You know, uh, and, and I think that it's incumbent upon us to leave no stone unturned. Oh, oh. <laughs> well, nice. and, and Mr. Chairman, if, if I may, the, and the design is all well and good. I mean, John, John can can tell us, you know, how it's going to be built and how it, well how it's going to be designed and, and how it's supposed to function. And then we have a history of people that seem to just build whatever they want, regardless of what's permit. And then backpedal on that later. Which is kind of why I was hoping it's they had well a documented. Somewhere it's well documented that the applicants, construction folk, just build whatever they want. Well, it, it's true, but for the permitting process, we can take that into consideration. But I think what and we that's, need that's why we're being so, and I, I just want them to be clear that that's why we're, we're being so focused on getting it in, in writing how it's supposed to be built so that hopefully it gets built close to what got designed. I, I, I agree. Uh, and, and I don't have a high level of comfort right now. Um, so th this is the area, it's the interface of, of the blocks and the, and, and the stone. And as Frank suggested, you know, improper geogrid uh, will clearly provide the opportunity for water to get between the two structures and cause erosion. 
once it starts, if it's not noticed right away, you know, in a year, two years, you have a boulder rolling out of the back. Well, if there was one continuous piece of fabric that went a, a good distance on either side of that seam, it would be held in place by either wall. And that, that I, I would think that might help prevent some of that. It seems like that would do the job. Yeah, I mean, one continuous piece that went, you know, 10 or 15 feet on either side of the, of the, of the seam behind both walls would, would I think help alleviate some of that. And again, as, as far as anything with the geofabric um, in relation to the VersaLock wall, I can definitely uh, reach back out to the VersaLock representative and get some more clarification on that for the board. John, I'm trying to envision, envision sort of how the two walls come together. Could you folks provide a plan or a, that, that basically shows where that joint is, if you will? Um, um, that that is something that um, we can uh, discuss internally and um, see if that would come from either VersaLock or ourselves in that case. That's a good I think that's I think that's I'm envisioning the wall goes in a sort of a, a parallel to the, the slope and then it turns in for five or 10 feet and goes into the slope. That's the VersaLock wall. And then where the VersaLock wall would end is farther in than where the top of the uh, slope a stone wall would be. There'd be a few feet separation. But again, that's in my imagination. It could be totally fictitious. So uh, as an engineer, as you know, I'd like to, we'd like to look at real things, details. <laughs> yes, so they, I think that that's good direction. And I think that's something, you know, um, John, you're going to have to, you're going to have to look at that and you're going to have to make sure that these, um, that these questions are answered thoroughly um, because your alternative is, um, we, we would have to decide that, um, the, the lot is not a buildable lot. So it's, this is, this is important information that you, you're going to have to provide. Understood. Okay. Can we get the copy now? Yeah. Well, you know, obviously you're going to be providing, this is just, um, this is just your request of us to see uh, if you are to proceed, okay? Because we've seen none of this information, but this is okay. just your request for us to um, see if you're headed in the right direction, right? Uh, yes, at, at this point. Um, and then we would provide um, like a full package for you, including any of these discussed items uh, to you for approval. Um, if everything is um, looking good on your guys' end at that point. Okay, so I think, I think um, and I'm going to ask Mike this one. Uh, I think that, that uh, we, we've given him his marching orders for this particular interface, and we'll await for that information. Sure. Um, you're going to follow up with the house foundation next, Aaron? Yes. Um, with regards to that, um, is everybody still able to see um, when I pull up the text on the screen, or do I have to shut that off and return on screen share for that? I see the I see the tax. Okay, great. Um, so um, under here for um, item number three, if you can see where my cursor is, uh, kind of centered to the screen, um, we did uh, speak to VersaLock on the construction of the wall in relation to the foundation. Um, we did have a plan in front of uh, both of us to discuss that. Um, we did not necessarily do a cross section for this plan here, but it was something that we did discuss a little bit more in depthly with VersaLock themselves. Um, in terms of anything uh, regarding the GeoGrid itself, as noted in number A, uh, GeoGrid is anticipated to be approximately seven to eight feet from the face of wall. Um, anywhere where we're looking at a height of about 10 feet. Um, obviously, as that uh, height of the wall decreases, that uh, length of the geogrid will be decreasing as well for it. Uh, but this would be falling within one to two feet of where the foundation would be. There is going to need to be uh, some coordination between the foundation and the wall designs to avoid any sort of conflicts, but it is something that will be feasible to be done. Um, in terms of the construction of the foundation or the wall first, the wall would be the first to be constructed as noted in uh, B, uh, right directly in the center of the screen here. 
uh, first layer of GeoGrid, once that is in place, we'll be able to then construct the foundation on top of that. This is something that uh, Versaloc has had experience with uh, contractors doing before. This is not something that's completely unusual for them. Uh, GeoGrids can be installed underneath structures and the increase in any sort of size and strength of those GeoGrids, uh, that would, that, sorry, <clears throat> that's where the coordination between the foundation design and the wall design will be coming into place. Um, but it is something that um, there is no issues with any sort of compaction or concerns of forms uh, for the foundation, uh, how that's going to adversely impact GeoGrid itself. Um, th there is no uh, anything major that came up from our discussions with Versalock there. Um, in terms of uh, item number C, uh, with the wall being constructed first, as I mentioned, forms used for the foundation affected. Uh, Geogrids, as they have noted, can be installed underneath structures. Standard compaction for the foundation construction would not impact geogrids. Um, and then uh, finally, um, the only item that we also have on here would be um, in terms of any sort of uh, limited space, uh, we're not anticipating um, anything that would be adversely impactful there. Um, we're not also anticipating anything major for shoring that would be required out there. And I'm sorry, John, I'm not that familiar with the plan. So this is probably a stupid question, but let me ask it. So um, we know that the, the wall is eight, 10 feet um, vertically. How deep will the foundation be? And where I'm going with this is if it's five or six or 10 feet, how do you have that vertical cut for the foundation next to the geogrid and not impact that without sheeting or something like that? Uh, I'm sorry, Frank. Uh, I'm going to pull up a plan, but would you mind uh, repeating that for me sure. just so I can follow a little bit more clearly there? Sure. And then uh, whenever you're ready, Frank. Okay. I don't see a plan yet, so sorry. Oh, sorry. Um, the, the, I do have the plan up on my screen. Is everybody able to see that or, or no? No. Okay. My apologies there. Um, Are you able to see it now, Frank? Yes. <clears throat> okay, great. So, um, I, I, so the, let me, okay, so let me go back. So it looks like the, it's a slab on grade, no found, no basement. And so you're 292, so you probably have five feet or so, four foot of cover, and then the footing or something like that for another foot, five foot excavation. Is that sort of a good estimate or guesstimate? Um, I, I would believe so in that case. Um, I have not been a part of anything specific for the foundation design itself. So um, I, I unfortunately do not have a lot of information on that portion. So if I follow what the wording said, the face of the wall is just under 11 feet away. The grid's going to go back seven to eight feet. So you're one or two feet away from the, fr the face of the foundation. Yes. And you put the grid in, you're going to build the wall up, and now you're going to be digging again from that top of wall, 296, 292, whatever it is down, um, four or five feet. And so that the grid portion is, is – I'm sorry to cut you off there, Frank, but uh, that portion's a, a little bit incorrect. Um, so okay. once the first layer of geogrid is in place – then there will be some coordination between the continual construction of the wall and the rest of the foundation. Essentially, everything's going to be constructed in a lift. Um, so once um, it is uh, at a level where the foundation can be constructed, that would then take place with the wall stacking up as the height increases of the foundation and any foundation walls, if that's so a little did, bit clearer. So they put in the the, the forms for the foundation basically after the first layer of the wall is that is correct then, then they could put the stuff in and, and it basically backfill between uh the yes foundation that is correct and that. okay um that would in my mind take very close coordination if they're off even a little bit the foundations you're not gonna have enough of the geogrid behind it and that's um, very very fine work there 
What could and possibly go wrong? That was noted by <laughs> Versa Walk as well, that there, there is going to have to be some coordination on the specifics for what's being designed for the foundation for any sort of loads that might be out there, um, as well as just the specifics during the construction. Will they be consulting to oversee uh, uh, the excavation and building? Um, that I am not sure of. And let's not lose sight of the fact that this wall is one foot off of the open space. Oh, oh no. As we, we, far as that goes, that was something that was brought up during the last meeting. Everything for this construction would be able to occur on the back side of the wall. Nothing would have to occur on the front side of the wall. So in terms of the one foot space that we do have to the property line and the open space area, even Versalock does not foresee that as being any sort of issue to construct this. You may not need to put a machine on that side of the wall, but you're going to certainly want to walk on that side of the wall and look at the, how the construction is going. Don't tell me no one's going to look at the outside of the verse lock wall, right? No, no, no. That, that is understood. Some, somebody would have to be able to, to walk on the other side in order to do any sort of visual checks for that. So you're going to measure people's boot size before they step over the wall, because if you're putting the cell fence down a foot out from the wall and somebody's got a size 13 foot, they're going to get stuck. You know, they're not going to be able to walk it. What can I say? You know, I, I have some concerns about operating equipment uh, on a lot that's that tight uh, in the first place, but um, we're approaching the end of our allotted time. In fact, we've used up our buffer. Oh. So um, what I'm going to suggest so that we don't alter the buffer zone, uh, that was from Mike. Um, John, I'm going to need uh, something from Versalock where they can show us a project that they have, uh, they've done with work like this. Okay. Now you said, you said this is not unusual for them. Then they must have, uh, you know, uh, projects that they can describe for you that you can bring for us. Um, and, and we can find out if they're available to actually oversee this because uh, I think it's, I'm getting a sense from the commission that um, due to the potential for error and um, the delicate work that's going to be required here, um, the commission doesn't seem to have a high degree of confidence that this can be successfully completed. So it's going to be incumbent upon you to demonstrate to us that it can be uh, completed with proper oversight with people who have experience in doing this kind of thing. Sure thing. Um, I can definitely make sure that we do inquire on that. Okay. So that being said, um, we're going to need to um, continue this. And we have 10 hearings at our next meeting. Um, and the January meeting is starting to fill up. <clears throat> second meeting in January. Um, given that this is a really difficult, di difficult lot, um, I'd like to go to the second meeting in January. Um, that would be the 27th. That'll give you ample time. The holidays are coming. Uh, even though everybody's gonna be staying home, they may not want to be working, so. Um, I'll entertain a motion to continue the hearing to the evening of January 27th um, at 7.30. So moved. Dis second. Uh, second, okay, a motion to second. Um, discussion, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, by unanimous vote. Good. All right, thank you all very much. I do John, you've got your work cut out for you on this one. Thank you, John. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Okay. So next week. Um, I will be present for next week. Um, and then just to confirm, um, that is for lots 82, 3, 6, and 87. Is that correct, Anne? Um, you don't need to repeat that. <laughs> 82, 83, 86, 87. Yeah, and um, then the ones we continue, and then the ones we continue tonight. tonight. 
Yes. Um, uh, we have. Uh, 7273747. Pelletier Drive and Mill Street. We've got 10 hearings on. And that was an overflow meeting from <laughs> this meeting. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Okay. Thank thanks. you. Okay, I see Margaret Bacon is present. Um, okay, moving forward in this meeting, the chair instructs the meeting administrator to deny the right to speak at the meeting until or unless such persons requesting to speak are visible on screen and request such access. The Bellingham Conservation Commission will hold public hearings in accordance with the Mass Wellness Protection Act General Law 131, Section 40, and the Bellingham Wellness Protection Bylaw, and the notice of intent for the proposal to repair an existing septic system located within the 100 foot buffer zone of Lake Hiawatha at Assessor's Map 74, Lot 54, 83, Lakeshore Drive, Bellingham. Margaret Bacon, Civil Site Engineering, uh, Maple Street Douglas, has submitted the filing on behalf of Holly Everett, uh, Lakeshore Drive, Bellingham. The hearing will be held uh, online via Zoom Wednesday, December 9th at 8.30. Okay. All set? Hello, All Mark. set. How are you? Good evening. Uh, for the record, Margaret Bacon, Civil Site Engineering, and I'm here requesting a permit to uh, construct a, uh, a septic repair for 83 uh, uh, Lakeshore uh, Drive. Uh, basically, uh, there's the existing failed system. Uh, and right now, I don't know if you've been out to the site, anybody? Yes. Uh, the administrator and I have been there. Uh, okay. It's a pretty difficult site. It's a pretty steep slope. And with respect to, uh, you know, property lines and things like that, there didn't have a whole lot of options on what we could do there. So what, what, we've got, what we proposed is where the existing uh, system is now, the existing uh, septic tank, we're gonna convert into a pump chamber and then pump up to the top of the hill and we're gonna put in a, uh, a bigger septic tank at the top of the hill. Oh. And then from there, it, it'll be gravity down to a, a Presby system that I can put on a slope up to 23% slope. Can I see that? Yeah. Uh, Margaret, Margaret, do you have the plan that you could share with us? Uh, I don't have it on my laptop, no. <sighs> Um, is this plan the same plan that you submitted with the NOI? Yes. Okay. Yep. okay. I think everyone did get a copy of it, although it was probably uh, some time ago. I have it on my screen if I can find a way to share it. That would be, that would be great. Uh, that would be awesome. Jim? Uh, where, is this re where is this in relation to that house that was just recently built? Right, right next, next door. door. Like you should have uh, the access to share screen now. All right, let me see if I can do this. Hang on, I tried it once before and share screen. And got it. Yep. Okay. Yep. There you go. Yep. Okay. Thank you. So Margaret. Okay. Can you see this? Yes, I can. Oh, geez, I'm, I'm using my cursor trying to move stuff. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's late already. There we go. Okay, there we go. Okay, so so basically, you see the existing house. Yeah. Uh, right in front of the house, there's an existing septic tank, right there. Correct. Um, and then there's so, some type of leaching facility down next to that tank. Uh, but there's really there's no room to to replace a leaching field down there. So we're going to take the existing tank, turn it, put in a pump and then pump up to a bigger tank at the top of the hill? Mike, go back to Lakeshore Drive? Yeah. yeah. Straight up from Lake, okay. Uh, okay, S mm -hmm. slide it over a little more. Okay, <laughs> now, okay, now bring, there you go. Okay, now there's the, there's the new tank at the top of the hill next to the, I keep pointing. Lakeshore Drive. See Lakeshore Drive? Yeah, you got it right there. Yeah, right so there. they're they're pumping from the bottom tank to the upper tank, 
And then from there, they're going to use gravity feed into the Presby system. And that's it. Yeah. So basically, I've used the advanced Presby system, which gives you a, a additional treatment. Presby's you can put uh, on a slope up to 25%. Uh, I have it at 23%. And then I, I have two uh, three to four foot retaining walls that helps take the cursor off of that slope. You see those darker lines at the top and the bottom of the, uh, the Presby system. Okay. Mm -hmm. That allows me to, to drop the slope three feet. Uh, so right at, at the top of the hill at the big tank there, yeah, right there. Uh, yeah, right there. So there's, there's the- to zoom in or something? Go ahead. No, uh, well, I think- Yeah, you're good. So where do you want to look at? That's the yep. new tank there. So right, net, right in front of that tank, you'll see a darker line. That's the first wall where I drop about three feet. And then I, then I have the Presby, which is on a, a slope going oh, down okay. the hill. So that's what you have now. Actually, the, the slope going down that hill now is about uh, 37%. That's crazy. So I, I'm flattening it up to about 23%. That's what these walls allow me to do. And I have the system in between those walls. There is little that can be done on this lot, you know. Um, so it's a three bedroom house. You know, when these houses were built, they were summer cottages and they all had cesspools, but people only lived there in June, July and August. Now you've got three bedroom homes all around the lake and um, they're tight lots. Um, this is not an inexpensive system. No, no it's not. No. And, and they are very limited in what they can do. I mean, aside from a tight tank. Mm. And even with a tight tank, you see where I have that, that my big tank at the top of the hill? Yep. You can see the, the property lines right there on the other side of it. So, you know, where they park, it, the parking area, nice and flat, but that, that's the... Uh, they don't own that property. That's part of the right of way. Oh, great. oh wow. So there's, there really is, you know. Wow. We're, we're stuck working up with that hill. And Presby's, like I say, they, they can go up to 25%. You know, and it is, it, it's very good soil, as you know. It's uh, sandy material with a great perk rate. So. so the shed's in the right of way, for the most part? What's that? The shed is mostly in the right of way. That's correct. Yep. I got a question. What is the magnetic on the left to the screen? The magnetic tape to be placed over system components. So at, once they put the system in before they bury it, you put this magnetic tape over it. So if you ever had to locate it with a metal detector, you can you can pick it up without having to dig it up. Ah. It's cold for piping systems now. Ah. If you're going to install, you know, like a gas feed line or something like that, you've got to, you got to tape it for, for location purposes. I can see that would make it a little more attractive. From I think it's line. going out of style nowadays. Yeah. I'm sorry. Dowsing has gone out of style. Dowsing has gone out of style. Yeah. <laughs> right. Dowsing works. <laughs> So, you know, I did look at different types of systems here and, and actually the, the Presby works best in this situation. In my opinion. Well, they, there are limited options. And that's correct. And like you said, you know, years ago when they built all these cottages, you know, cesspools were just round cylinders that just went straight down. 55 gallon drums. Yeah, that, that's correct. And now you have to the systems are obviously a lot larger and up near the surface and you need a whole lot more room. So, and then you, so you, you're, you're, you're kind of stuck and you're trying to make these things, fit these things in with what you have. So the administrator and I uh, did go and inspect the site. And uh, as I think our vice chairman was suggesting, it is next to, the new construction, um, 
immediately to the lot on the left. So all of you will remember um, the slopes that were there. It's the same thing here. Uh, only this lot's uh, a little more narrow. So, I mean, there, there you go. You can see the you can see the grades on either side. Uh, those are one foot contour grades. Correct. So you're you're looking at thirty feet drop. Yeah, it's a yeah, yeah it's a 30, 35 to forty percent uh, drop. The grade slope. Remember that that lot next door. Just just walking down, it was. Uh, well, actually, get, getting down wasn't so bad. No, it was coming <laughs> back that was a killer. <laughs> Plus, it was all loose soil. So, um, you know, we went and inspected um, everything. Again, they're pretty limited by what they can do. Anybody have any questions about this? I was. I just would like to uh, comment on Margaret. What type of erosion control are you proposing? Uh, I just have those straw waddles. I probably should have beefed it up with some silt fence behind it. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I talked with Bill. I suggested to Bill that we might want to do that um, simply because of you know, because of the grades of and the, grades. the amount of material is going to be moved around. Yeah, I, I agree. I thought about that after the fact. Mm -hmm. So I, I can uh, I, I can beef that up. Thank you. Well, that doesn't have to be on the plan. We can put that in the order. We'll put that in the order of conditions. Okay. Um, because it's a septic repair, because it's a failing system, um, this is one we would like to expedite. Like I said, Ian and I went out and took a peek. Um, again, it's you're between a rock and a hard place. Um, Mr. Did you Chair, number that? 11, Mr. Chair, number 11 on the notes, uh, there on the left there, construction notes, it says yep. loam and seed. Uh, what are they going to do at this time of year with that? Loam and seed. Oh, when are you proposing construction? Immediately or in the spring? Uh, it'd be depend upon our client. I think she, she has to get pumped out now every, uh, every few weeks. So I think the sooner she can get this thing going, the better. And so if you do it in the winter time, uh, what we usually do is you take straw and you mm -hmm. spread it over the system until, until springtime. Yeah. yeah. Would that work on this steeper slope? Yeah, you've got environmental matting on slopes greater than 50%. This is going to be less than that. But um, you, you can get the, uh, uh, yeah, the, uh, the straw. Uh, uh, Mats, yeah, not the real heavy duty mats, but just the, the straw mats that biodegrade right in place. I mean, you, you can get that for this site. Is that okay? Is I that think like that we walked around on Mr. Chair on lot 10 by Lake Silver Lake, that mesh stuff that we were waiting to sort of walk. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah, That's and the it, straw? It, yeah, and it biodegrades, it's held together with string, yeah, just a, just a like a jute, yep. Duke mesh, yeah, it's just just a blanket. That's correct. I mean, sometimes you have this really heavy duty uh, blankets, but I th think that's really all you need here. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yep. Me. Okay. All right. Any further questions or comments? We have prepared the order, I think we are we gonna have to make a couple of little adjustments in the special. Yeah, condition. but that's okay. I can Okay, so we're gonna make a couple of um, adjustments to the order of conditions, but the document's prepared, so Ian will do that. Okay. Um again, you know, it's a failed system. We want to get it in the works ASAP. So um if there are no further questions or comments, I'll send a motion to close the hearing and issue. Uh, and sign and issue the prepared order of conditions. So moved. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Aye. Now, Margaret, I probably won't have this issued until Monday. We're, we're trying to work out 
um, the logistics of getting our permit signed. Um, so, but when it is ready, shall I send it to you? Yes. Okay. We'll get it out as soon as we can. All right. Very good. Thank, Thank you. you. Yep. Okay. Have to stretch. Oh. <clears throat> okay, we have uh, we have a couple of minutes before our next hearing, and I see Mark Arnold is here. Um, Mark, uh, are you available there? Can you? I am. There he is. Okay. Um, My apologies for not logging in earlier. I didn't get the email with the Zoom login, and it looks like the agenda had a miss, messed up meeting ID. So uh, I got that from James. So kudos to James for responding to my email. Thanks, James. <laughs> okay. I can't blame him for delivering my phone. <laughs> okay. So um, I know you're here to discuss the. Um, Certificate of Compliance for Hartford Avenue, and the correct. Yeah, what happened was we we actually acted on that um, because our first hearing uh, requested a continuation, so we had like twenty minutes. So we signed some stuff. Yeah, talked about it. Um, the the commission discussed. Um, The whole, what we did is we discussed the project. Um, we came to the conclusion that uh, unauthorized uh, cutting had taken place. Alterations occurred in the, um, in the buffer zone. And uh, as a result of that, we've got rest, we got restitution uh, in another area on site. And if we were to not put ongoing conditions in place, then we would, you know, an applicant could just refile and utilize possibly uh, both of those areas. Uh, we knew, we know that there was a possibility that we would get protection of another portion of the site, but there were, we don't know what that is. And I think the commission was unanimous in its opinion that um, we'd rather preserve the area that was marked out, um, then take our chances with maybe protection of greater or different area. So um, um, they voted to sign with. Uh, I, I, hello? I guess the, the one question I did have is I mean, it, 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 if, if that's the commission's position, you're, you're treating the area that was disturbed as permanently impacted buffer zone, which it's not. It's not permanently impacted. It was, it was slightly altered, but it's still fully native vegetation. There's not development there. There's not um, disturbance, impervious surface, uh, um, significant runoff changes that are being discharged to those areas. And so the, the, the new owner's hope was that the commission would, at least in the future, consider that you can at least request a permit to do activities in the buffer zone and the commission's discretion is to review that and he hoped the commission would 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 take that perspective of any work on on a in a buffer zone is is potentially permittable if presented before the commission and he was hoping the commission wouldn't consider uh, a, a, an area that could have been permitted for clearing possibly but was done illegally um should, should it necessarily discount the, 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 the reviewing the whole site as a whole and understanding what buffer zone is there? Because again, I mean, the, the area hasn't been developed. It was cleared. We still have rebounding native vegetation, uh, which the commission has all seen. Um, 
it's actually created a more unique meadow habitat than just forest habitat, um, which from a wildlife habitat, so there's definitely more diversity now in that area because of, of the, 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 uh, the, the logs on, on the ground. And so I think that was the, the one thing the applicant was hoping that the commission would hear. I don't know if, if any of the commission members would, would at least be willing to say, I, I think I, the ongoing condition saying it can't be developed is very, is very harsh on an area when it, it, it was mitigation for something that was never developed to begin with. It was, um, it was cleared. And I think if, if the commission is gonna take a hard line on that, the applicant might've considered working with the commission more on that. Um, so that was what I was, I was intending to present. My apologies for not getting on again. I did not get the Zoom email, so I didn't have the right ID to log in. Um, so and I know the, the applicant was planning on logging in around nine as well. So um, again, I mean, it, what was exactly the wording that the commission discussed early on? I'm assuming you have that, Anne, in, uh, written down of the exact wording that you were planning on putting on the COC? Oh, it would just be, it would just be the same wording that was on the original order of conditions that was referring to an ongoing condition. Okay, so um, I guess, I mean, does, does the commission consider ongoing conditions reviewable in the future by the commission? No, but what we do, what we would, we would consider is the filing of a notice of intent for the area that had been altered for activity there. In other words, well, I guess it, 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 in my, it, it is it's just a question of clarification that would, that could result in activities closer to the wetlands being permitted than activities further from the buffer zone being permitted and other areas being uh, left in place. So for example, work in the 75 to 100 foot buffer zone across the entire site could be permitted and it's further from the wetlands. And, and so I guess it's, that's, that's the issue that we're seeing is it's of this, is is that kind of flexibility that the app the owner would like to have because again we haven't actually permanently altered an area significantly enough to damage the buffer zone to be unnative and and there's definitely not that there's been an impact to the wetlands itself um, and so from from our perspective a condition that's in perpetuity um, that bans this area from ever being um, uh, permitted for activities again permitted now I mean it's not saying it, you guys have to review it just like you would review any other project but the fact that um, an area that was slightly altered in the buffer zone the outer buffer zone is is going to be held as almost its developed activity um, whereas it's natural now it's going to continue to naturally restore into a, a, a natural buffer zone in a, in a more robust way just as meadows early us uh, so, excuse me, Mark, Mark, so if I may, um, this was a tricky one, as you know. Um, so we had, um, we had a violation take place in the property. Um, and when it was filed, when the notice of intent was filed, it was to provide mitigation. Um, we thought the, work, the commission worked with the applicant at the time uh, to get this mitigation. Um, it's like any other mitigation that we, we would have required um, and whether no matter where it's located it's still mitigation for the original violation um, and the applicant agreed to it and there was no appeal to the order of conditions um, and if if it were any other mitigation that they had to plant somewhere we would still have the ongoing condition to protect that area of mitigation that's the whole idea of the filing of the original notice of intent. So the area that was preserved was the 50 to 100 foot buffer zone. The area that was altered was the 50 to 100 foot buffer zone. And so the applicant has the right to file the notice of intent at the front of the property to utilize the 50 to 100 foot buffer zone. I, <clears throat> I mean, I think that the, I think the commission made, uh, made a correct decision. Um, I mean, to the chair, I mean, the, the commission um, can allow 
I mean, a, a project to alter almost all of the 50 to 100 foot buffer zone on a property. I've seen that commission do this. And, um, and that's, that's typical uh, and it can occur. I mean, depending on the situation and other mitigating factors. But um, in this case here, it, it, the, 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 the illegal clearing of, of the land in the 50 to 100 foot buffer zone is being used to leverage to, to stop development in other areas that typically um, would be reviewed for activities in the buffer zone and could be permitted um, for activities in the buffer zone. And that's what the applicant is, is kind of concerned about. Oh, Mark, excuse yeah, me, Mark, it, it, wasn't it your firm that suggested that we have mitigation in the back of the property? Um, it's mitigation for the violation that took place to begin with. You know, you, you can't have it both mm. ways. The notice of intent was filed for mitigation. The commission worked with you. Um, we, we came to an agreement the applicant did not appeal. The order of conditions was recorded um, and, and we had the ongoing conditions. I mean, this is how the process works. Um, we're, we're not trying to um, prevent the uh, current applicant from utilizing that property. Um, there is a, the area in the back that's mitigation and that's, that was the whole idea of the whole filing was to provide mitigation. So. If we don't have the ongoing conditions, we don't have the mitigation anymore. So what was the sense in filing to begin with? Well, I, I think I think that the commission can, can definitely have an ongoing condition that the commission must consider the previous violation um, as, a, as, a, as, a significant, as an impact to the buffer zone and, and must, must, must more thoroughly review buffer zone work that's permitted. Again, if, if that was the commission's position, that I, I think it is it, 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 it makes sense. The commission has to take that takes takes the, the original impact in into into account. But uh, again, I mean, again, if this was a if this was an undeveloped site, uncleared site, work in uh, work in Bellingham when permitting before this board, work in the 50 to 100 foot buffer zone through a lot of the 50 to 100 foot buffer zone it is is typically allowed in, mo in, in most situations with, with certain situations not being allowed because of mitigating factors. So um, again, it's, it's the fact that we have, it's not like we have a permanently impacted 50 to 100 foot buffer zone here. The only change is your, 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 your vegetational story of trees and uh, the a stuff there. So yeah. it's, a, it's, again, it's, it's a natural area that's not developed and that's why the, the, the owner wants to just ask the commission to really consider that um, aspect. And I understand that the commission's to go in there and cut the trees. review of, of, of the original notice of intent that was with the, that was with the previous owner, the new applicant, the new owner would just like the commission to consider that as a factor, just because it, it, it again, it's not well, like there's a permanent well, barrier. Well, it's, it's, your, it's your case that, that all conditions on lots go away when the ownership changes. No, I, I, I'm just asking. That, we we worked out this deal on, we worked out the, 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 the program on this lot to deal with the previous violation. Nothing has changed since that day. Except there's a Except new Except the change in ownership. Right. And you're okay. looking for a do-over simply based on a change in ownership. I, I'm, a, I'm just asking the commission to, to consider. And we did. We did consider it. You, yeah. you didn't consider a, 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 a proposed Yes, we project. did. We considered so, it fully. That's, I again, this is what I was asked to relate to the applicant. Um, and I understand the commission's position that this condition has to be in perpetuity. And um, that, 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 that's, if that's the commission's position, that's, that's I understand. I, I was just asked to relay that. Um, I think it's a reasonable request to allow additional review. Again, I'm not saying you must allow it. I'm just saying, Flee, I, we were hoping that you would just consider that um, in the future uh, as again, as if this area, if the original impact area completely revegetated and restored naturally and you had a hundred foot buffer zone, then, then why do you need mitigation if the whole area restores fully or is restored fully? Maybe it's, it's restored fully in a future- Because the previous owner agreed to it. Well, okay, I, I have a question. Yeah, that's, I, I have a comment here, okay. Um, we, we have heard uh, Mark make his case. Mm -hmm. 
Um, I will ask if anyone on the commission would like to make a motion for reconsideration. Um, I see a, a lot of our microphones are turned off, so that's kind of difficult. I can't, I can't tell if anyone is. I don't. Uh, I don't. No. I figured silence was a no. Okay, well, all right. But I mean, with microphones turned off, I can't hear. I mean, I don't know if people are talking and they, okay. Um, so I think that there is no motion for reconsideration, Mark. I think this is what, right. this is what we're gonna have to live with. I, I, can I, appreciate I, understand, I understand your position. I, I'm just gonna state for the record that the, the meeting agenda that was posted on the website had the wrong meeting ID, which did not allow the applicant or myself to log in to hear the initial discussion with the commission and bring our discussion before the commission voted on issuing the certificate of compliance. Okay. Just for I, record, I'm going to state that, but the commission has already voted. I understand previously at this meeting on this meeting, and um, that is all I have to say um, for this evening. And I, again, I understand your position, and, and I do respect it. Thank you. Okay. Good night. Good night. Okay. All right, the roadway. Okay, moving forward in this meeting, the chair instructs the meeting administrator to deny the right to speak at the meeting until or unless such persons requesting to speak are visible on screen and respectfully request such access. The Bellingham and Conservation Commission will hold continuation of public hearing in accordance with the Mass Wants Protection Act and Roll Law, Chapter 131, Section 40, on the notice of intent for the proposal to construct a new access roadway, improvements to existing roadways, stormwater management facilities, utility improvements, including a pump station located within the 100 foot buffer zone to boarding vegetator wetlands, including the proposed alteration of 150 square feet of bordering vegetator wetlands located at Assessor's uh, Map uh, 45, Parcel 50, 6 North Main Street. Mill Street and Common Street, Bellingham. Uh, Mark Allen, Allen Engineering Associates, uh, Charles U. Road, Hopedale has submitted the filing on behalf of Dennis Rain, Bellingham Town Administrator, 10 King Street, Bellingham. Uh, the continuations will be held online via Zoom on Wednesday, December 9th at 9 p.m. Okay. I'll put that right there for the moment. I need to get this. Okay, so um, this is for the roadway uh, portion of the Red Mill project. Um, we received the peer review comments on Tuesday and um, we have had no opportunity to review those. But what I'm gonna ask Mark Allen to do um, is as our standard procedure, provide written comment and what we'll do, um, and we've done this earlier in the uh, meeting, if Frank would send uh, Mark uh, a Word document of your, of your comment letter, then um, Mark can respond directly uh, on a point-by-point -point basis. Um, that allows us to track the progress that were made and the areas that may need a, additional attention. Uh, I can get okay those up tomorrow. Okay, Mark, you okay with that? Yeah, that's what we do all the time. Yep. Perfect. Well, I figured you know the drill, but some people seem to get confused, and so we're making everything as simple as possible moving forward. Um, so, that being said, there still are a couple of things that um, that I would like to ask, um, and information I, I, I think that you we'll have no difficulty in providing. The first is just a simple question. Um, when you were using your uh, calculation for the rainfall data, 
Um, were, did you use the uh, NOAA data? We used the, the Cornell data. The, okay, for, perfect. Yeah. All right. I couldn't. I couldn't find that in in the drainage calcs. And mm -hmm. okay. Did you know that the DEP is revising and making adjustments to their stormwater management standards? We do. Yep. Yeah, and that's what they're going to be. They're going to be using the NOAA. Mm -hmm. So, but okay. Um, I think Sean has, um, Sean, are you available to, uh, what I want to do is I want to just review uh, the pre and post construction uh, subcatchment areas around the town hall um, so that the commission's familiar with that. So um, Jim can Sean, uh, he's got it, okay. So we'll do the pre if you don't mind. Okay. Is that the one you were looking for? Okay, so that is um, the existing. Uh, yeah. Yes. Okay, so he's got it right down here. I just missed it. So this is the area that um, the roadway basin is going to uh, capture, and this is going to be the assistance uh, rendered to the town and as part of the MS4. Is that's right, Mark? Yeah, partially correct. We're actually going to add additional flow outside of those pre existing areas as well. Okay, good. That's and, well, no, that's going to we're going to see that in the next slide, right? which is the post condition proposed. proposed. But you're adding additional flow to right. this? So CHA gave us uh, their hydrocat analysis for four offsite inputs into our basin. Um, and uh, those additional uh, offsite inputs have been added to the post condition calculations correct and do we know the location of those there were four separate locations and they they all range uh they, they all go uphill towards this um towards south on the south main street so it's it's a little bit um off site so it's kind of off the sheet um but uh, according to CHA, in, in, in the HydroCAD report, you'll see uh, those four areas captured. Okay, our peer reviewer Frank is here. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think for clarification, Mark, can, can you can you develop a plan there for us that will will show us how far up South Main Street we're able to go? Yeah. Yep. I can. I gotta work with CHA. I'll, I'll get their file for you. Perfect. Perfect. Um, mm -hmm. The next, um, the next comment I have is for the replication area. Um, what we'd like to do, what we normally do, our procedure is to have uh, a short narrative, and then uh, we have the, the points on the narrative put on the plan. So we have a dual layer of, of protocol for uh, replication. And I think... Um, Point of order. I have to, I have to make a point of order. I'm sorry. Um, is Ariane still present? Yeah. Ariane, you have to recuse yourself because you did some work on this site. Okay. Because is that correct? I was going to ask because I don't work for the company that I. I I, I, I don't want to take a chance there. I don't think that. Um, because you did work on the site, I don't think it's appropriate that you sit in on regulation. Okay. So I excuse myself then. Uh, oh, thank you. Um, I apologize. That should have been done first. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> in in fact, Ariane, that's what we have for the next one too. So I mean, you can certainly sit in, but just not participate. Sounds good. Okay. Thank you. 
where was I? Okay, so we were talking about um, replication. Um, we have a small uh, wetlands um, impact. I think it's for the sidewalk. Um, that's it's be not going to show in this plan, though. I don't. No, think. no, no. That's uh, the sidewalk that's going to be proposed on Mill Street. Correct, Mark? Yeah. So uh, you'll see that on the uh, the sheets number. I believe it's six of eight or five of eight on the on the sheet set. Five of eight. Right, the area of impact is it's right along Mill Street. I'm sorry, four of eight shows the area. I, I think it's it's, it's to the left, eight. Sean. Well, you said four of eight, right? Yeah, I'm sorry, it's sheet four of eight. Right, um, I don't know if you can screen share with me or just kind of on sheet four of eight, top center of the. Yeah, page. we can see it. It's a uh, proposed wetland replication area. Correct. 400, yeah. 400 square feet. Correct. And that's replicating the 150 square feet uh, just above that. Uh, okay. Um, Frank, has, has, has your team looked at that? I, I have not looked at the comment. I haven't had time to look at the comment letter. Has your team had an opportunity to, to review that? Have they commented on that? They have. So, their comment uh, really, and I sort of, they sent me the memo. I've actually talked to them this afternoon to get more detail. Their concern is that the location, which is sort of on a three to one slope, um, that they were not really sure the way it's positioned, it's going to be very successful. That, and again, they didn't have a lot of the detail, um, but they were worried that it did not meet the, um, get the right wording, it did not meet the functions and values under the Wetland Protection Act, um, they were very concerned about where the location is and wanted more detail um, and maybe a consideration as to where that could be put somewhere else that might be more appropriate, not at a three to one slope coming down to a more a flatter area. If you recall, if, if you recall, Cliff, uh, you and, and uh, on, our, on our site walk, you and Jeff DiRigio from Sage both uh, had agreed to that location, which is the reason why we, we showed it in that location. We we don't have any particular, uh, you know, dog in the fight for, for the location. So if that's not an area that uh, either you or BSC agrees with, we have no problem uh, moving it elsewhere. But that was the, the exact location where we were standing there on site. That was uh, that was pointed out to do it. I, absolutely, I do recall that, Mark. Um, and I will admit to the fact that I did not consider um, the abutting slopes. Uh, I was just looking at the at the area. Uh, frequently, we'll have people who try to do, you know, replications in in a linear fashion. Um, but you're going to be responding to um, the peer review comments, and if if that that was a comment, Frank, or was that something that's coming? That was um, at the end of the letter. There's a memo from our wetlands folks, so that was in the letter uh, package that went out to you guys. So maybe if you could get to head, put your head together with Sage, uh, Mark, and see if if there might be a more appropriate location, because ultimately um, the goal here is to make sure that it's going to function and and survive. Yeah, I think uh, one of the reasons why we liked that area, if you recall, was that it had a, it still had a lot of water there. Um, we were in a period of drought at the time when we were on the site. Um, and if you recall, there was a lot of water there. So we thought that might be a good place to put it. So obviously, you know, we're not the professionals here. Um, so maybe Sage can give you a, a hand with that. Yeah, we can revisit that for sure. Perfect. Um, and I think I had only well, can, can I just yeah, well, um, go ahead. So um, once once we get that location um, uh, decided upon and agreed upon, um, uh, we we're looking. We usually we would require request uh, a replication plan um, to show you know the types of vegetation, um, you know how you your protocol. The types of plants you're going to be putting in there, etc. 
um, and to have that incorporated um, into like, like a narrative form to be added to the plan um, so we can take a peek at that. Yeah, what, what we did, uh, what we attempted to do after the last hearing was try to make these two plan sets completely and, and totally separate. And we, we captured a lot of those items uh, in this revision, uh, but that along with a couple of the other items that Frank pointed out in his letter, we will be adding to this sheet. Uh, so we're bas basically gonna be using the same, uh, if the details in the construction standards are the same, uh, we'll, we'll just carry those over here. It'll make this set a little bit bigger, but I think it'll be clearer in the long run. Um, not only for this wetland replication area, but we will also uh, add uh, the, the very similar erosion control plans like we did for the subdivision set. Okay. There go half my comments, Mark. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the, that's the goal. That's the idea. Uh, and the only other um, uh, immediate comment that I had was um, it, it's, it refers to, uh, Sean, you still with me? Yep. Can you run me? Uh, can you run me down Mill Street to where the crossing? Uh, no. The, uh, yeah. To, oh, I guess we got to go to the next sheet. No, that's up Mill Street. Yep. Okay. You want to go down <laughs> Mill Street? <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> You're doing great, sure. Yeah, sure. Oh, okay. Good. All right. So um, we're proposing to change. Um, uh, the drainage uh, under Mill Street. Um, Mark, could you just give us a quick rundown on that? We talked about it in the field. Yeah, if you could, if you could actually, Sean, go to sheet five of eight in the plan set. Yep. That's the proposed condition. You got it. Yeah, so if you kind of zoom in there where it's in between um, the last two industrial buildings on the left, there's an existing 15 inch, uh, uh, concrete pipe that drains the two cash basins and drains the wetland uh, from the south side of the street. And what what we heard in, uh, on our site walk and through uh, the planning board is uh, that the, the, the residents or business owners of that area have complained about uh, the puddling nature in and around uh, the end of the street. So if, if you could just pan right to the end of the street, Sean, that's kind of middle of the street. If you can pan right yep. between 10 and 12 Mill Street. Correct. You're getting there. there you go. <laughs> <laughs> so if you just zoom out a tad, we can actually see all the text that we captured for you. Yep. So in the in the the text boxes, if you will, uh, what, what we've proposed to do is uh, three things. One is to, to, to mill that portion of the road so that it, it eliminates the irregularities of the grading in that area. And I think that was the primary concern that, it, you know, little sp spots puddle up and freeze and, and the water doesn't get to the two catch basins. So we're proposing to, uh, to just regrade that area so that the, 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 the water gets directed to the two catch basins. Um, and then those two catch basins, uh, instead of a single grade on each, uh, put a double grade on each. That's the second item just to make sure that the water gets off the street and into the into the pipes. Uh, and then the third thing we came up with was uh, just to add a second 15 inch pipe uh, in parallel with the existing 15 inch pipe. So no, none of these measures are meant to, to um, uh, increase any flow to the, to the abutting wetlands to the rear, but just to allow the water not to freeze in, in times of, of times of rain. And we did, we did based on Frank's comment, you know, evaluate the downstream uh, impacts. If you kind of pan up a little bit, Sean, behind building number 12, you'll see that Sage did uh, flag that uh, private property and, and all those wetlands are flagged. And, and you'll notice that there's a, a 10 foot vertical difference between the outlet of the drainage pipe uh, and the standing water uh, against the railroad. So there will be no impact uh, to, to any sort of downstream uh, flooding concerns by any means. Mark, you think you got the storage capacity there? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so, um, in there, if, I, if memory serves, at the end of the outlet, there was at one point some kind of a, 
a plunge pool or something. There was some kind of a water quality control, control structure. Mm. You know, when we were out there doing our walk, That's, it's right, it, yeah, mm. we see the, uh, you see the discharge point. And we didn't walk down there, Cliff. We, we, we stood in the street, but we didn't go back down. To no, the neither did I. Yeah, I, I've been out there and it's, it's a little bit overgrown with, you know, cat nine tails, but the, it's very well, um, it's in great shape. There's nothing clogging the outlet. Okay. There is riprap at the, at the outlet of the head wall. Um, so I, I wouldn't recommend any, anything, uh, you know, different, but maybe the, the second pipe that we put in just to, to refresh the, the, maybe refresh the riprap and maybe just clean out the cat nine tails at that discharge point. But it, it does drop off nicely and there's no, there's no flow restrictions in it. At some point, I think we're probably going to go take a look at that. Is there any woody vegetation? Not that I noticed, no. Okay, well see, that's good. I mean, because the wetland plants uh, growing there, as long as they're not impeding flow, you know, they're performing a uh, function of, you know, helping to clean the water, almost yeah, like a floor bag. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if, if there's no woody vegetation. Now, is there a head wall there? There is, is yeah, there's a concrete there? head wall there. There is, okay, so you're just gonna, and is it a head wall or a wing wall or? It's just a straight head wall. What, straight. We, pro what we propose to do is just run that second pipe just to the, to the right of the head wall or just beside the head wall. Okay, and so will you have like another, like a wing to put it in or something so that it's not just, you're not just gonna have a pipe sitting out in, in on the ground, right? We'd have, we'd have, uh, we'd have riprap and a flared end section just so, okay. so as to match the elevation of the, of the current head wall. Okay. So we'll ask Frank to take a look at that. And, mm -hmm. you know, and, and in the meantime, at some point in, in our spare time, uh, I'll just take a quick look at that. But if it's as you describe, and I have no reason to think it isn't, um, we just may want to leave the vegetation there and, you know, I'll let it act to purify the. Yeah, I totally agree. And, and we, I was out there a couple of times, even after a rainstorm and it's, it definitely does not plug up the, the, the pipe by any means. And it's, it does allow for unrestricted flow down, like I say, a 10 foot grade change down to the, to the water elevation. Okay. All right. Frank, is there anything, any comment that you might have now to? Uh... Um, I think, again, I didn't have the background as to the, the issues of the drainage problem on Mill Street. I figured there was an issue there. Um, I didn't realize there was a drop off to that bunch pool. So I think that makes a lot of sense, addresses some of my comments. The only other one, and again, I think you can get around this, is um, the existing, my understanding, and please correct me, Mark, is that the new pipe is going to run from a existing manhole downstream of Mill Street. It's not going to go all the way up to the wetlands. It's from downstream. So the water getting to that drain manhole isn't getting any more. You're not draining the wetlands any faster. Exactly correct, Frank. Exactly correct. And one of your comments was, was well taken, and that is we don't know the exact configuration of that, of that drain manhole. So, And maybe I'll just add that to the notes that upon excavation of, uh, of the drain manhole, if we're unable to make a, a true core next to the 15 inch man, uh, drain pipe that's there, we may need to add a second manhole just in case the geometry doesn't work out well. No, I think, and then interconnect them or something. That, that sort of makes sense to me. Um, many of a young engineer have had, when they put six pipes into a manhole and had to tell them, <laughs> there's gonna be no manhole. And go back and redesign it. So right. um, I think that, that sounds fine. Okay. Um, does the commission have any other questions or comments? Okay. No. All right. I'm going to give this one back to you. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, if, I mean, there were a couple of comments. I just want to just bring them up. I think they can be addressed. Like I said, most of my comments were the fact that um, there were details on the Red Mill residential that were not shown here, erosion control. If, if what Marcus suggested, if he does that, I think that will be fine. 
it will make essentially two sets of plans for one project. But again, I think that makes some sense. Um, there are a couple of waiver requests. We don't really have any issues with those. One waiver the town may want to think about the proposed uh, detention basin. If you follow your bylaw, you're going to require a lot. That's what every detention basin has to have or infiltration, but it has to have a lot around it. I'm not sure it's needed here, but it's just something to think about that that's a bylaw that you may have to grant a waiver to yourself on. Um, the one item that I had a, a question on a, a little bit on the detention basin, um, when I was scaling off the plan, I printed out the plan, the Detail shows a three to one and three to one slope on either side that that complies with the town's regulations. Um, but the grading on the sorry, Ted, I'm sorry, there was a requested waiver for three to one to three to one. Excuse me, that's what was requested. Sean, Sean, can you move us back up to the detention basin, oh, please? Sure. <clears throat> yep, absolutely. Do you want me to stay on this detail or? Uh, no, I think sheet, it's uh, probably the next four. one. Yeah, four would be better. Uh, four. Okay. And if you can zoom into the detention basin there. Yep. Oops, I lost it. Thank you. There it is. You're welcome. Um, so, Oops. we lost it again. Yep, there it is. You were um, correct, Frank. The, the detail shows three to one interior, three to one exterior slopes. And I, I've made that edit for the next round, but it, yeah, we're showing a two to one slope on the exterior, three to one on the interior, okay. which is in line with the waiver request we've asked for. Okay. Then again, that's just, I mean, that should be clarified then. And, and again, it's something the town has to consider. It's a waiver request. Um, most of these don't really matter. Um, the one, the same right. right there, Frank. The same right there. I think the the um, the slope and the in the in the great capacity before that yep. basin. Um, we have no we have no problem making that change to a cascade grate. Okay. Um, I, I did after looking at your response, kind of look at how much water was going into those catch basins, and there are there are four catch basins along that steeper slope, two at the mm -hmm. high side, two at the low side. Um, and just through the nature of not having uphill, you know, offsite water coming into them, they don't collect a lot of water to begin with. But we have no problem putting uh, cascade grates on okay. those, those four, on those four cascades. I think that's fine. Again, the drains here are relatively small. Um, it's another yeah. project where they're much larger, and so I'd be worried about bypass. But I think right. the cascade grates would be would be appropriate on that. Yeah. Um, for a more general consideration. There's a lot, there's going to be a lot of trips of cut material coming off the site. And so from a, a traffic management program, some are going to be coming off of Mill Street uh, or this connector road. Some are going to be coming off of when, when uh, the connection to Mechanic Street. The town may want to look at how that's managed, uh, particularly before, if they're coming down Mill Street before the connector road has been built. Um, I'm presuming, although they could take a right, they'd want to take a left to get to the highway. That's going to be something that has to be managed. Um, yeah, that's that's a process, uh, Frank, that Be Bellingham does through their Zoning Board of Appeals, and we fully intend to do a, uh, a full earth removal project. Again, that's kind of getting off this NOI, but it's more for the subdivision because that, that has the cut. This does not have the cut. But the, yeah, we, will, we are fully anticipating uh, a, a full analysis of, um, of timing, locations, um, uh, the trucks being properly covered, uh, time of days. So yeah, that will all be captured in a Zoning Board of Appeals for the, for the earth removal permit. Once we determine, you know, down the line, how much, or, you know, if, if any of the plans change in the subdivision, we, we just didn't want to jump the gun on that. But that is a full hearing process, public notification, uh, and a Zoning Board of Appeals permit uh, that we will get. Okay. Um, and then really the only other comment I had that um, we haven't really talked about yet um, will it ties to the waiver. So again, um, Mark has already noted that if we do not get the waivers they requested, it's going to be a design change. Mm -hmm. So um, that the, looking at the waivers and how um, reasonable or, or whether they're going to be acceptable to the commission and the planning board, I think are going to be one of the items that need to be done relatively soon in the process. 
if it means a redesign, then they're going to have to go back and, and do a bunch of changes. Um, so. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, That's so the really waiver that's the items pretty much that I had on on my hit list here. So, so the waiver that's requested uh, for this basin is from a three to one slope to two two to one slope, and that is a planning board waiver. Correct. Okay. Yep, and uh, and I think the uh, sorry uh, uh, the planning board I think is going to be discussing that tomorrow night, um, and I think. In typical practice, if they do grant the waiver, they would likely want a construction monitoring agent there for uh, these basins. But again, they'll talk about it tomorrow night. Yeah. Okay. Progress. Um, all right. We have another hearing scheduled uh, for 930. So um, in order to gather this information, um, and I, I don't suppose that Mark will have any um, objection if this project wraps up before the housing portion of the Red Mill project. Yeah, I think, so, I think we, we talked about that as a team and then obviously the town is the, the applicant on this particular NOI. I think what would be wise is to, you know, obviously hammer out all the, the plan changes we've just talked about mm -hmm. and get it to a point where we're comfortable with nothing else is going to change and just kind of leave that in the can and then leave the hearing open until the subdivision runs through just so that they run time frame wise along the same path. Oh, so that one change doesn't necessarily necessi necessitate a change on this. Right. I'd hate to, I hate to close this out and then have to re-advertise and, and re have a whole new NOI filing. Oh. So would we. Yes, so would we. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'll entertain a motion at this time to continue um, to continue this hearing. And I'd like to go to the evening of um, January 13th. Uh, and I'd like to go at 7.15. So I have a motion. So moved. Second. Okay, discussion. All in favor? Aye. Okay, by unanimous vote. Okay, good. Okay, we have the same team here, so um, same rules will uh, enforce, um, and I'll read the advertisement now. Bellingham Conservation Commission will hold continuations of public hearings in accordance with uh, Mass Wetlands Protection Act, General Law, Chapter 131, Section 40, Bellingham Wetlands Protection Bylaw, and the Notice of Intent for the Proposal to Construct Roadways, Associated Utilities and Stormwater Management System for the residential subdivision entitled uh, Red Mill on the Charles, consisting of 109 single family dwellings and 54 townhouse units. The proposal includes 247 linear feet of alteration to bank, 3,180 square feet of impacts to boarding vegetated wetlands, and 6,600 square feet of proposed replication. 967 square feet of impacts to land under water bodies and waterways, and 117,892 square feet of proposed alteration uh, to the riverfront area, including uh, 17,969 square feet in the inner uh, riverfront area and 99,932 square feet, 23 square feet. Impacts to the outer riverfront area. The proposed project is located at Sessors Map 51, Parcel 13-1 Mechanic Street and Mill Street, Bellingham. Mark Allen, Allen Engineering, Charles V. Road, Oakdale. Hey, Cliff. Yeah. Cliff, we can't hear. We can't hear you over the background noise. We have background noise. Strange. I could hear him. Sorry. Frank. My bad. You hear me? Yep. Mark? Sorry. What's... Yep. No, it was on my end. I apologize. No, oh, oh, okay. Okay. All right. Um, well, we got most of it. <laughs> so the hearings, 
Don't make me read it again. <laughs> <laughs> the I missed that be, middle part. <laughs> <laughs> the, the hearings will be held uh, online via Zoom on Wednesday, December 9th at 9.30. You can do the Spanish version now, Cliff, for the Spanish speakers in the area. <laughs> I missed that. What? Do the Spanish version now, please, for the Spanish speakers yeah. in the audience might be listening. Okay. Oh, this goes here. Okay. Yes, they teach. Yeah. Okay. Um, I did speak with Frank's um, wetland portion of his team, and we expect that um, some comments will be forthcoming uh, relatively soon. Uh, they wouldn't commit to a date, um, but we know that it's in the works, and we know that the impacts that were in the advertisement have already been reduced. So, um, like we did the last time, I've got a short list of things um, that we can ask Mark to start working yeah. on. Um, I just wanted to say that I recuse myself from this one as well. Thank you. Thank You're welcome. You. Thank you. <laughs> Yes, at least somebody's paying attention. Um, so we already talked about um, the Cornell data, so I'm sure that you utilize that in this product it's as well. Right. Uh, and um, the total maximum daily load for phosphorus, um, we'll ask Frank to take a look at that. You're going to be meeting that criteria. Yeah. Um, in the, when we did our first cut, you did a resource area plan for us? Yes. It, it was extremely busy, but it was also very helpful. So if you could do one, a resource area uh, impact plan, uh, similar to the one you did the first time with the revisions that you've already incorporated, um, that would be good. Yeah, you'll, you'll, you'll see, and I'll just kind of back up a hair. Based on last meeting, we, uh, we heard what Frank was saying with the, the plans being a little bit busy, so we did go from like a 54-sheet set to a 60-sheet set, and the additional sheets were to do that, to clarify uh, wetland impacts, riverfront impacts, erosion control, um, breakouts. So what we tried to do is make it a little bit more uh, user-friendly for the for the review folks. So I I think Frank would attest to the uh, readability of the plan said it's a little bit easier to do. Um, and, and I think it's going to make both our jobs a lot easier moving forward. Yeah, we, we did see that um, in, the, in the plan set, but that one overall plan, even though it was really busy, um, it helped us wrap our heads around, you know, the impacts to like the riparian zone and the buffer zones. Um, mm -hmm. But w one of the things that was missing was the 25 to 50 foot temporary disturbance zone. We'd mm -hmm. like you to put that on there too. Okay. Okay. Uh, that shouldn't be a big deal. Um, and uh, we know that in the notice of intent, you talked about the habitat evaluation. Yes. Uh, you didn't feel that that was necessary. Um, I think that we're going we're gonna to require a detailed habitat evaluation based on the fact that, you know, there's over 5,000 square feet of uh, resource alteration uh, to the riparian zone, uh, along with substantial buffer zone alterations. And, you know, we have the 100 foot setback to vernal pools, even though there's only a 50 foot no disturb zone. The, the local bylaw provides for a 100 foot buffer zone. And we think that there is utilization in that 100 foot buffer zone. So we're gonna require a habitat evaluation for that. Is that is that in the local bylaws? Did we miss that in the local bylaws? Uh, yeah, section 247-25. No, Mark, we, we show that correctly. So this is Mike Dryden with Allen Engineering. We do show that, we're aware of that. Okay, so, so Mark, I guess the, uh, the plans that I saw showed the 100 foot buffer. Yes. But what we're saying is that there is impact in the 50 to 100 foot buffer to the vernal pools. Correct. Right. So this combination of uh, impact, um, we're going to require the habitat evaluation. 
Yeah, so we're later. giving you the heads up now. I yeah, don't know later. what Frank's team's going to come up with. They may come up with the same thing, but we're trying to yeah. give you a head start here. Yeah, Michael, if you could just expand upon where we came up with that response. Can Michael for turn the, on uh, his camera so we can see him, please? I'm sorry. I'm at, I'm at my home office, and I don't have a camera Okay. on this PC. All right. We'll allow it this time. So what we're talking about is a distinction between the 50 and the 100. Um, and Mr. Chairman, we do, we, we recognize your comment. We are performing work within the 50 uh, to 100 zone, but we have removed all the work uh, from the 50 foot zone, which on the initial plan set, we were showing substantial work in that zone. Um, so again, we've respected that 50 foot no touch. But what we understand you're saying now is because we're doing work within the 50 to 100, you'd like to see the habitat evaluation. I guess just for a, for clarification, are we talking about a, a very pointed habitat evaluation for just certain areas, i.e. those those areas where we're within 100 foot no touch to the vernal pools? Or are there other areas? I just want to make sure that we understand exactly what the scope of the habitat evaluation should be. Sure. Uh, I think what we need to do, we'll evaluate any impacts that are in um, the in the riparian zone. Now, obviously, some of the some of the areas uh, were subject to previous activity, but there are also right. some wooded areas uh, that are in the riparian zone where tree cutting and clearing uh, is going to be required. So what we're going to do is we're going to ask for uh, a detailed habitat assessment for the areas around the vernal pools that are being impacted, understanding that it's you, you're not impacting the zero to 50, but the 50 to 100 uh, in the riparian zone. Okay, okay. Okay? Great, thanks for the clarification. No problem. <clears throat> um, and the other thing I think that the commission needs to think about is the waiver request you've made. Um, Frank, one of the waiver requests they've made is that there's no increase in runoff volume uh, up to the 25 year storm. Um, like you check that calculation and make sure that that's accurate. Because I think Mark that you said in, um, was it a revised uh, environmental comment or in the original NOI? you said that that was not required. I, I don't understand the question, but I think what we were doing was, I think that the town's bylaw requires that uh, a 50 year storm be attenuated where we were asking for a 25 year storm be attenuated. It, it just reduces the amount of tree clearing necessary for uh, that drainage work. Well, what, there, there were three waivers that you requested. Mm -hmm. One is for the one foot freeboard on the 100 year storm. Mm -hmm. And the other one is for modeling uh, frozen ground conditions. And then the other one is for uh, no, increase, no increase in runoff volume up to the 25 year storm. Right. Actually, that one, that one we no longer need. If you look at the latest narrative, um, again, this is Mike Dryden. Yeah. Wait, that was previously waiver number five for no increase in stormwater runoff for up to the 25 year storm. That's right. And we were able to make that work. So we, we, you can see that we struck that waiver. Yeah. There were originally uh, five waivers. Now there are only three requests. What's the third one? This is June. This is your June 30th narrative? No, the, the, the revised narrative was issued with the plans. It's dated October 28th, and it's on page oh. six, five and six. Oh, okay. Uh, okay, I've got I've got an older version. Okay, I was working off of an older version, so I will um, get myself up to speed on that. My apologies. Um, I'm not, I'm not so, gonna... what were the three uh, uh, waiver requests, then, Mike? Can you tell us? So. Yes, absolutely. So again, originally in the document that you have in front of you, Cliff, there were five. Number one is still valid. That's for work within the 25 foot no disturb zone. 
uh, and that applies to the crossing area, the resource area crossing. All other areas, it's been removed. Um, wa waiver number two is no longer needed, but it was um, a 50 foot no disturb in the vernal pool. We were doing work, as I previously stated, within the 50 foot. So that waiver is no longer needed. Waiver number three still applies. That's the minimum one foot of freeboard between the 100 year ponding elevation and the emergency overflow. That still applies. Uh, waiver number four, as you stated, Mr. Chairman, basin shall be sized assuming fro frozen ground. That waiver still applies. And the fifth and final waiver, again, no increase in stormwater runoff for up to the 25 year storm. That is no longer needed. Right. Okay. So I will, I, I will review that. Um, and I'm going to ask uh, Frank's team to take a look at uh, the uh, no, no increase in volume for the 25. Make sure that that's correct. Um, and then what we'll do is we will conduct uh, the review. And, and I'm thinking about going to the same date as um, the roadway portion. Do you think that that will be sufficient time for you, Mark, to respond in the proper form? Well, it depends on how soon Frank can get us the oh. uh, yes. So um, I'll go back to the office. Um, well, I'll virtually go back and beat up my folks tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Today. No. Um, we're looking to get this in within the next two weeks. So it would be before, it would be a Christmas present to everybody. So that would be a couple of oh, weeks. Oh, delightful. Back. Is that something that's doable, Frank? I think so, yes. Based on what we know at this point in time, yes. Well, we know that it's going to be busy, even though nobody's supposed to go anywhere or, any, or entertain anyone. Um, and that, that'll give us time, too. That'll give us time before the 13th. We'll have something to you, hopefully, the week before, so that, you know, that'll give us two weeks to digest it and, and get our answers back to you so that you'll have a week or so to, to look at them. And what we would appreciate is that if it looks like there's going to be a delay um, to let us know. Mm -hmm. and, and then what we'll do is we'll, we'll, we'll continue. We'll give you a one minute hearing mm -hmm. just to continue because believe me, Mark, we have no difficulty filling spots. <laughs> I can see that based on tonight's agenda. Yeah. Yeah. Well, <laughs> and, and the overflow agenda right now has 11 hearings on it. <laughs> That's, the overflow agenda. So, <laughs> all right. Um, Ian, do we have a time on that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, well, I buried so it'll be January 13th. Mm -hmm. Here it is. 745. 745. Okay. All right. I'll entertain a motion to continue the hearing to the evening of January 13th at 745. Moved. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you for not voting, Arian. <laughs> All right. Um, good. I think we're I think we're in good shape. Um, Great. Thank you. Thank you. Merry Thank Christmas. You. Yeah. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Happy holidays. Happy Festivus. Solar, whatever. Hey, <laughs> okay, we still have time to see that. <laughs> yeah, we still. Hey, you know, 10 o'clock. That's when the viewing begins for the uh, Aurora Borealis. There we go. Okay, uh, any other, other items? So, um, if any of you can contact me with a time to uh, sign. I got a couple of vouchers and a couple of permits that would be most appreciated. Um, and I'm sorry, I think I was away for that portion of it. Are you going to be in the office Friday morning? Um, yes. Perfect. I can swing by Friday if that works. That would be wonderful. Thank you. Awesome. I'm in tomorrow morning, Ian. And Mike's coming in tomorrow. What time do you want me to be there? I don't want to make you come in at six or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Not that she's going to. Um, well, when is good? What time do you normally stroll in to the office? 
Well, I'm not going to. Depends get... if we meet here. Yeah, I usually, we usually break down the day first. here for an hour. Yeah. Well, that's fine. I mean, I can. I can. All right. Why don't we do time. ten then? Ten's good. Fine. I'll see you at ten. That's excellent. Thank you so much. I'll bring a pen too. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> Just in case you're out. Thank you. <laughs> COVID-free pen. Bring a clean one this time, will you? Oh. Yeah, I'll try. You know, I'll try not to lick it. Or, uh, yeah, you know. <laughs> Ian, I don't think I want to come by and sign anything at this point. How are you feeling? I, I'm I'm fine. I've just been exposed the last three the last three weeks. I went to Nichols College. They closed the office that I worked in like two days be before, and I went back with the part. And couldn't, you know, I worked on the machine because it was outside of that office, but I was in that office. Oh, there was no. a COVID exposure there. Um, I had another case at the Oxford Town Hall where they, I went there on a Friday morning and told the woman I'd come back in the afternoon. And they told me I could not get in that office for another week because of COVID-19 exposure. Oh and last week I was supposed to install a copier at a nursing home in Milford on Friday. And there was an email sent by the staff that they locked down the nursing home. So oh my God. It, it's, it's all around me every day. Yeah, Sounds please. like you an SCBA or one of those Tychem 10,000s to the site. I, I wanna... They call it a microclimate by air. It's like a space helmet. <laughs> oh, well, thank you for not coming in. Oh, Ty typhoid Mary or Typhoid Norton, we should call him now. Oh, COVID Norton. You know, I never knew my job was so hazardous. <laughs> never yeah, used to really, be. Huh? All right, well, I think, I think we're all good now. Uh, I want to thank uh, Sean for uh, assisting with that. Um, I, I think moving forward, uh, on reviews like this. Uh, I think it's very important for us to be controlling the plan set. You know, when we're in a public meeting, meeting face-to-face, -face, we can turn the pages, uh, but this is good for us. I want to thank Frank, especially for the extra he, he gave us for a couple of those hearings. We really appreciate your efforts. <laughs> Added value. I want to thank Jim for, um, you know, Maybe maestro of ceremonies again. The host with the most. <laughs> Being so, the Zoom uh, motion to adjourn. Thank you, Amy, for taking notes. So moved. And thank you, Amy, for taking notes. <laughs> this is a good one. And if we don't we'll see, see you guys. We will next week. Yeah. Oh, we're going to see you next week. Uh, <laughs> special meeting, right? Uh, what time we do we start? One more. What time do we start? Um, I seven. Think, I think at seven, seven again. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Your time expired. Have a good night. All right. <laughs> good night. Good night.